Welcome back, everybody, to KSL. Korea StarCraft League is back for Season 4. I'm Rapid with no regret. And we're back after two best of fives and a pretty extended break there with our winner's match to decide which extended player... Extended break? You said short break, didn't you? I did say short break. I <laughs> lied to you. I am so sorry. I promise it'll never happen again. I promise. Uh, so we had a long break, but up next we have our winner's match, which decides which player advances out of Group A in first place. And then we have our loser's match, which is going to eliminate our first player <laughs> from KSL. So right. coming up, I guess we have the winner's match, which is Modesty versus Mini. Mm -hmm. Battle of the M's. Is this the winner's match first? No, it's the loser's match It's the loser's match first. Okay. Yeah. So that we have Stork versus wrong. Mind. That's right. So Stork versus Mind. Um, I would say that probably Stork looked a little bit stronger, but I don't know how Mind's PVZ is. I, if I remember correctly, he's not as good at, P at, at TVP as he is at TVZ. Mm. So well, he had a lot of strategies. He seemed like he was well prepared, so mm -hmm. it's hard to say for sure. Uh, but I would say if there's no preparation, then I would, I would put Stork as the favorite. But at the same time, he was really well prepared for modesty. Like you could see the, the preparation. Right. In his I mean, play. I think you can know what to prepare for for your first opening match, obviously, but you don't know exactly who you're going to be playing next. Well, you got to prepare for everybody. Ideally, yeah. yeah. Um, and I mean, these players do play each <coughs> other on a pretty regular basis, so it's not like we totally know exactly how all their games are going. Uh, if I remember correctly, Mini uh, is doing the best as far as spawn bangs go right now, which is like sponsored matches that streamers play, uh, but. I w this is a lot different environment, obviously, so it's not yeah. really good to judge that way. But It is not. <laughs> yeah, so for the matchup coming up uh, next, Mind, it seemed like, wanted to play a more tech-heavy style. So let's see if he stays the same way or changes it up as we get into our first game of the elimination match. It should be played on Into the Eddy, right? In the way of an Eddy. Or in the way of an Eddy. Into the Eddie, same thing. I mean, it's just called Eddie now to make it easier. Uh, <laughs> it's actually so crazy to me that we're already eliminating a player from KSL. You had to wait months for this to happen last season. So already a, uh, a very big change to the way that we're doing this season. Either Mind or Stork will not be in KSL after this best of five. It's very sad. That but is actually just so crazy. You have to eliminate people. That's how it works. Yeah, that is true. Can't Eventually we just have everyone win? In KSL. What Eventually. if we just give everyone a participation trophy at the end? Is that well, exciting? We kind of do that already. It's oh, called well, prize money. <laughs> okay, you all get prize money, but look, first place is 30 grand. That's that's actually a crazy amount of money. So, yeah. Uh, Stork, I think he's probably going to be a little bit upset about how his games went against Mini, um, especially that in-base pylon game. I think I kind of want to forget that that happened, but <laughs> probably not going to do something that crazy against well, mine. Yeah, he still has a chance, though. He still has a chance. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I think mine, though, uh, TV plea plays very differently than uh, TVZ, so obviously, uh, I don't know if we're going to see Corsairs this time, but uh, for Mind, I think he will play a little bit more slowly and methodically. I think he'll be rewarded for that, especially starting out on In the Way of an Eddy. Well, isn't that how Stork also likes to play? Yeah, it is, but I would say that uh, the Terran race, if you let it sit there and get 2-1 you know, sure. or 3-2 you know, upgrades, yeah. it's just pretty good. I mean, I agree. Mech seems pretty strong in this uh, game. Quite. <laughs> All right, looks like we are about ready to get into our first game of Mind versus Stork. It is on the way, on in the way of an Eddie. Let's go. All right, here we are uh, for the first game in our elimination match. That means that uh, the red Terran <coughs> player in the bottom left is Mind, and the blue Protoss player in the upper left is Stork. Indeed it is. So, any expectations in this matchup? Uh, I mean, normally the way this works out is that uh, the Terran player is just going to try to get an expansion, go mech, get good upgrades, and make a push happen. Uh, you can go like a proxy factory and try to get a vulture in. For the Protoss player, you can go like a one base shuttle reaver if you really want to get out there and be aggressive. But I wouldn't say that either one of these players are really known uh, to play that way in this matchup. So that would be very surprising for me. Right. 
<clears throat> well, I'm 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 interested. I don't think uh, either player is going to be dying anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, this it's is usually pretty rare to just kill somebody in the beginning of the game. Yeah, so I mean, Protoss kind of have the impetus in a lot of ways because Terran do not want to go bio, which is kind of your early option. Uh, one thing you can do as a Terran is try to go for some sort of two fact play and just put a lot of scary mech units on their side of the map ahead of schedule. But yeah. probably you're going to get scouted before that happens. So in general, that's not super, super common. In general, what Terran players will do is they'll try to get uh, like 2-1 upgrades because that makes you like two-shot Dragoons and Siege Tanks, and that's you know pretty good. So right. uh, it, yeah, you're yeah, right. It should be a while. Are, oh, yeah. Generally, okay. the games are pretty standard. For a second, I thought this was his. The barracks was on the other side of the map. I don't know what's <laughs> going on with my mind. Thankfully, we do have the viewer boxes. Um, which show us exactly where uh, each player is looking. Kind of yeah. interesting to notice that Mind plays on the old 4-3 aspect ratio screen, and Stork plays on the new, uh, you know, extended 16-9. That's uh, funny because Stork is the older player. You'd think that he would be more willing to play on the old uh, format. 4 -3. Yeah. Well, also if you have like lower APM, maybe it helps to have a bigger screen. I don't actually know. I'm just making things that up right now. That doesn't make any sense, but I'll agree with you, Rabbit. Nice. 16 by 9 is for slow APM people. You guys hear that? You don't have All to move Twitch the screen chatters, around. You're using the wrong hey, yeah, aspect ratio. That's exactly what I said. Or you're using the right one if you're slow APM. <laughs> Either way, I think that... All the StarCraft 2 players play on 16 by 9. You, you might be onto something here. Is it, was there ever a way to play StarCraft 2 on 4.3? I think well, not, right? Well, you can right? play it in Windowed if you want. You can play it on any If you just really have to get a smaller screen? It gives you black bars on the side, so... Nice. You can do whatever you want. I can. I do have that freedom. So, hey, anyway, we are uh, doing a perfectly standard opener for, uh, for Mind, and on the other side, Stork has yet to even find where his opponent is. Yeah. Well, well he's going to find him now, which is nice. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's also going to give him... Perfect Scouts information. The range too. I mean, there's not too much to talk about at the very beginning of the game unless something crazy happens, right? Yeah. Like it's all pretty pretty standard so far. Uh, the big thing is you want to figure out when the oh, Protoss player what? expands. Wait, what? Okay, okay, well, I guess he's getting a full scout. Man, that Marine is <laughs> off duty. Uh, yeah. yeah, so the probe gets in. It's going to see absolutely everything. Note the factory numbers, and that's kind of the big thing you want to take away from yeah, this. Yeah, that was a little bit of a mistake. I mean, it's always nice to just shoot this away, but I guess it's kind of normal for the probe to get a full scout, anyways. I mean, you can block it. That's the thing. It's like you can prevent this. Yeah. You just have your Marine on the ramp. But either way, I mean, they're Marines, so eventually they're going to push the... Uh, oh. oh, he's trying to hold position. Ah. Oh, you got to block it. Oh, the mineral walked through the SCV. Yeah, he got away. Yeah, that's pretty good. Probes, hardest to kill unit in the game, for sure. For sure. Battlecruiser, nah, it's definitely the probe. Uh, but the Expo is coming down here. I think maybe you peek back in with the probe just to make sure. Yeah, it'll come in with the Dragoon. Yeah, here it is. Dragon's probably going to tank for a little bit and see if he can get the probe scout. Okay, it doesn't immediately focus down. Nice. I think one of those Marines actually has one hit on it, but you kind of have to deal with the SCV because it's like the linebacker. Yeah. Uh, but SCV hey. If he gets a full scout, it should be a Nexus. Pretty standard still. Yeah, I would say that at least this part has been all according to Keikaku, but I don't know what the uh, what the next transition is. We haven't seen any like big tells. Vulture. Yeah. Uh, I guess one thing that could kind of change the way this matchup works is uh, whether or not we see Goliath play, because that is actually becoming a little bit more popular. It's great if you're going up against a shuttle reaver user, like if you suspect your opponent's going to go like one base shuttle. Right. Um, but that's probably a, a little bit of a rarity, and Goliaths kind of suck just in general. Also, if you think your opponent's like a good carrier user, then sometimes you'll see that as well. Right. All right, so Vulture. Oh. These are so important, you can't lose Vulture. Be, yeah, devastating a really good pickoff. Sometimes it can be a little bit risky to have units just randomly out on the map, but in this case, Dragoons do do pretty well. Both of them too. That's really annoying. That's a big tell, and it's also like doing damage to these is really good. It's like if they try to do run bys or something. Yeah. Okay. Oh, is he gonna get it? Oh, he pops up, he stutters it. Nice. nice. That pickoff, or that uh, stutter step micro is very hard to do, and he does pick off a mine. I mean, it's, it's a mine, it's totally free, but it was cool. Yeah, it was nonetheless. Cool. You're right. It's kind of nice if you do damage before it goes underground. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to do that trick. <laughs> but hey, anyway, the game is going to progress. That's all I <laughs> say. You're yeah. right. I, what's kind of cool about TVP is that almost always you'll get a chance to at least hit the mid game. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes that means, especially if the Protoss player isn't macroing uh, like 100%. The vulture. Uh, oh. Uh, oh. Oh. Wow. What? What? 
That's the first time I've seen a Dragoon actually be useful. Yeah, how does it ever. actually kill it's the never, thing? I've it's never seen a Dragoon be useful except for that time. That's the first time. Okay, so there is the armory on the way, which is really cool, because that in general does mean that we're going to see either fast, or either Goliaths for fast upgrades. I would imagine that the upgrades are going to get really uh, yeah, gonna fast get started here pretty for sure. soon. Uh, and the reason that you're doing this is because you want to hit that 2-1 timing. You're going to maybe try to put on a little bit of pressure. Oh, no Ooh, way. He snipes the probe without nice. one hit left on that vulture, and it delays this Nexus even further. Right. Yeah, I think the upgrade the upgrade thing is a pretty. Oh, did that go off? Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. Well, that's really oh, good. Oh no, he's gonna. Oh no. Oh. Oh, he did went off again. I didn't even see the explosion animation These there. These three dragoons are basically useless now. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say useless, but especially if you're trying to fight off a Two tank of them with those have things. A quarter HP. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna have a good time there. Uh, yeah. oh. So they're pointing out that the uh, armory isn't not spinning yet. At least I don't think so. Keep uh -huh. an eye on that one. But you're right. That should be for faster upgrades. Because hitting a 2-1 timing as a mech player, especially if you can get that third base, oof, that's going to be so scary. <laughs> oof. That's right. Rapid. Take oof is the sound that Dragoons make right before they turn into Blueberry Syrup on the map. Blueberry Syrup. Is that what you call it? That's I mean, the brightest Blueberry Syrup I've ever seen. Well, as if there's really blueberries in Blueberry Syrup. Is Blueberry Syrup blue, or is it more like a purple? Well, it depends on how many chemicals are oh. hit, I guess. Clearing up the mines. Yeah. Is the third base gone? It has gone down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, it, the general rule of thumb for PVT is that you want to stay at least one, one to base two bases ahead. ahead. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of times you'll see Protoss players expand, in this case, into the upper right-hand corner, because you want to try to make it as difficult as possible for the Terran to like, the get to where you center? are. Uh, yes. So this is actually super standard by mind, and it shows that he wants to play that same style we saw earlier, a very calm, defensive play style. It's nice. He's already adding on a ton of Goliaths and stuff to shut down any real pressure that mm -hmm. can be done to him. Well, I mean, the real pressure you're going to face at this point is either you get pushed by a huge Ooh. gateway army, which is not or happening. Or going into Arbiters, I guess. Or uh, something tries to fly into your base, whether it's a shuttle, whether it's an Arbiter. And you know Goliaths what really doesn't push you? Dragoons. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dragoons do not push a Terran player. Unless you, for some reason, just have infinity more Dragoons. Uh, yeah, probably not a good idea. Yeah. Kind of like our game is definitely becoming more standard. Mm -hmm. I like the Stargate. I like the Stargate. That, I mean, it's just telegraphing, like, going into the late game, really. Or at least yeah. the mid game for PVT. I mean, this is going to be kind of a, like a No Rush 15 kind of game. <laughs> That's what it seems like. Both players just teching up to try to get to a place, but I think this is maybe even better for the Terran player because the upgrades for mech are just so much better. Yeah. Especially if you keep your mech count like up the entire game. Like if there's no trades at all. Like if you trade with mech and it gets small, it's not that scary. Okay, oh, so Stork is, really is actually going to try to come in here and bust this. The tanks do not have a whole lot in front of them, but oh, look, no. they are just well enough defended so that they're getting off these huge tank shots. There's a deep tank line here too. The mines are being laid. Tried to mine there. Yeah, he's focusing down the mines actually very, very well, and this is not going to work out. If he gets that last tank, it's, uh, I mean, it's pretty bad, but. <laughs> okay, that was pretty bad. I mean, he basically traded for the, the fodder for the tanks, which is not something you want to trade oh, for. Oh, it's a oh. fleet bacon coming down, and this is exciting for a couple of reasons. One, I thought it was going to be Arbiters after that, because uh, I only saw one Stargate. I was like, okay, yeah. this is just moderate. But no, we're this going. This is really risky, though, at the same time. It, oh, it is cer certainly super risky. Is it risky. three starports? <laughs> I believe it is. Thinking? Yeah, like this is really risky if, if a push happens, but I think Mind is going to chill until his upgrades are fully up. Yeah, he's getting a second armory. Mm -hmm. So we're probably not going to see him move out until 2-1, so he should have a decent carrier count by then. He's going to come down to scans. If you can scan this and see it coming, you've already got the Goliath tech, so you can just start massing Goliaths. But I would say that uh, the third base on uh, this map is pretty hard to defend against oh, carriers. No. Because there's that high ground. Oh, wow. Oh, this is gonna be oh and they run oh, right no. through the, the the pylon wall. Okay, no. this is really annoying. Not only is he going to lay mines inside the base and kill some probes, he's going to scout the carrier tech. Yeah, this is really, really bad. Oh, my God. I mean, even if all these get cleared up now. Did he scout the carrier tech? Actually, he, he hasn't, hasn't gone, gone very yet. far south. Oh. Right now he scouted it. Yeah, that one definitely that saw close, the yeah. fleet beacon. So it's either He either got the luckiest scout or the unluckiest scout there. Like it's so, It was so close. Yeah, well, it definitely saw the uh, the tech, so I'd say that's pretty good. He that's probably would have scanned sure. it anyway. Yeah. Well, so now all that uh, both players have already set their courses for this game. Mm -hmm. uh, Stork is going to go carriers. 
and mine is going to build a bunch of Goliaths. <laughs> and in general, I'd say Stork's ahead because he already has all the Goliath tech and he's getting better upgrades. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, mine is mine is going to be playing defensive for at least until he has enough Goliaths to take out a carry army. Is that? Oh, that's cool. But it does get shut down. Nice observer positioning. Yeah, ex scouting exactly for that. Just wanting to make sure that mine doesn't get any free drops. Yeah, damage. drops yeah. off. I mean, you already took a little bit of damage from those uh, vultures, so definitely want to make sure that doesn't happen again. Ooh. <laughs> oh no, not Norad too. Rest <laughs> in peace. That is, uh, wait, whose shuttle, or whose uh, battlecruiser is Norad 2? It's uh, Edmund Dukes, right? Yeah, so the, the theory is that this map is called In the Way of an Eddy, because the Eddy is Edmund Duke, because that's his battlecruiser battle cruiser <laughs> that's crashed there. I don't know if my lore is correct there. Maybe you guys can tell me. A tweeting at Rapid Casting. Nice plug right there. Beautiful nailed it. Plug. Uh, but I think that's that's my uh, that's my <clears> theory. That's a beautiful plug. Anyway, hey, he's killing off the uh, the NORAD so that in hopes of expanding there, and we should see that Nexus come down here momentarily. Well, we do see a cannon. That's kind of like a Nexus, except you can't mine from it and it shoots things. You know, you might be onto something there. No regret. Uh -huh. I think you figured it out. I did. This is why we keep no regret around. <laughs> I was I was pretty sure it was going to be a nexus, but I couldn't tell the difference. So do you think he's going to try and hit a two one timing, or I think he's going to hit. Oh, well, mine is trying to hit a two one timing. That's this thing right here. Yeah. Uh, Stork in the meantime is just trying to hit Not six dying. carriers and yeah. go. It takes like five minutes to get a carrier full of interceptors. So five I mean, minutes. It's a long time. Yeah, Stork is just going to have to hang on for a long time. It's yeah, a lot of Goliaths. I may be um, off with my, my calculation it there. It's definitely not five minutes, but Okay, it's a, it's long, a time. long time. Yeah. I said like. That's my qualifier that keeps nice. me safe against exactitudes. Are we going to see? Looks like it might be kind of like a base trade here. Well, let's see how carriers do against Mask Goliath. This so is actually regret. a pretty good fight for uh, Stork, as long as he doesn't just lose every interceptor. Well, keep in mind, a lot of those carriers do not have full interceptors, so that's something to remember. The counterattack is going to be devastating, though. This is so many... Uh, gateway unit, and there's not and there's a lot of tanks. Here, really. Yeah. If, you, the, if the carriers can hold on the other side, he's going to win this game straight up. We have but a I don't know base if trade? I, I mean, this should be better for Stork, right? Yeah, carriers are pretty good. Yeah, Stork definitely, because like, I think Stork was about to just die, possibly. Uh, yeah, oh, no. oh, this army turning around is huge. Mine is pulling back, but hey, if he's able to kill all the gateway units, that's still pretty bad for Stork. I think he's not going to be able to kill them, though. Look, he can't even really stop the retreating. Oh, man, this is oh, actually this is really bad. I think if the Protoss army just turns around, he can kill both flanks. Okay, everything is on siege right now. It's still coming towards the army. I mean, the tanks are doing pretty well, and the Goliaths are picking off carriers. That's actually huge. He's down. Oh, is, is he, he going to lose one? another carrier? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's going to get the third carrier. Wow. So killing off three carriers is gigantic. <laughs> what are they attacking right now? Oh, there must be a Goliath underneath the carrier. Look yeah. like the carrier was attacking the own carrier. I'm like, no, don't do that. <laughs> so this is pretty... I mean, Stork lost almost his entire army. This is really hard to call, but I think the big thing is the top base isn't taken here. I mean, like I said, this is a good base for carriers to attack because they have the high ground like that. You do have to make sure they're not in range of those uh, turrets. So he's just injuring all the turrets one by one? I mean, he's actually taking lots of carrier damage, too. And these are 2-1, so the 2-1 timing, like we were talking about, is here. Yeah. He's going to be Although up to he's still, uh, he's still pumping carriers. The only thing, if that base didn't die, I think Stork would be in a great spot. But Stork's kind of rebuilding his economy still. And the carrier count isn't high enough where he can just kill Goliaths freely. Right. He's only on four carriers right now. Like six. Four carriers, this six Goliaths are actually kind of scary still. <laughs> yeah, the first six carriers are definitely the most important because that's when you reach your maximum potency. And losing three of those is actually gigantic guy in the chest. So <laughs> This is really nice that he keeps uh, harassing here because I think this kind of prevents the Goliaths from just pushing across the map. Yep. Uh, it's really going to keep mine back in his base, so this 2-1 not going to be able to really use that. Yeah, he's just kind of uh, kind of fainting pressure here to force mine to not move out. Because if mine moves out, I think Sork's in a ton of trouble. Uh, yeah, oh, for sure. Uh, the Terran mech would actually just like stomp all over uh, Protoss at this point. So you got to try to control it while you're expanding and getting better upgrades. So he actually doesn't have uh, Interceptor Oh, upgrades. look at that. Am I wrong oh, the run by. No. Oh, trying to block, but the Vultures get through again. I mean, that probe was the... <laughs> That was really ambitious. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the carriers are getting damage done. The only problem yeah. is that they haven't killed a base off yet, whereas mine has actually gotten by with two Vulture run-bys at this point. 
Now, uh, probe count's not going down too heavily, though. That was not a terrible run by. Yeah, the Zealot like, spawn that could have been timing really bad for Stork. Really helped him out there, and he's still got that island base at the six or uh, twelve o'clock. And he's also still pressuring with the carriers. Like yeah. his position, he's making his position not bad. Like considering mm -hmm. if everything went wrong, I think for the most part. He's been doing a really good job of controlling the Terran. That is a really scary mech yeah. army. Yeah, he should be up to, so he's at, yeah, still at 2-1. He's looking for 3-2. That's going to be gigantic. But these carriers should actually start to have upgrades, and I think it's seven carriers right now, if I'm not mistaken. There should be, oh, six carriers. There we go. Not bad. It's really important he keeps the pressure up here because, mm -hmm. like I said, if you give the Terran breathing room, he can just push across the map and kill you. So he needs yeah. to keep pressuring there. I think that's one of the hardest points to actually defend if you're the Terran player with that high ground. Uh, yeah, for sure. And I think we should start to see mine maybe expand uh, again at this point. Yeah, I mean, it feels like he's been gearing up for a big push for a long time. Well, the problem is, like, this is almost all Terra needs to do is just sit on three bases, get 3-2, yeah. and then push across the map. Because carriers cannot oh, fight. Like This just base is almost completely undefended. He might actually be able to just snipe the base. Is he going to get it? I mean, this is the only I thing mean, trying to keep mind back is defending this base. Well, let's see these Goliaths start to funnel up here. If he can catch the Goliaths in low numbers. them all one by one. Yeah. Uh, this is really good for Stork. Look at that carrier micro. Uh, so good. But at this point, I... Okay, now all the Goliaths are here. He should back up. But he's doing a really, really good job of just keeping the Terran active and defensive. Yeah. I mean, he still hasn't killed the base, though, which is you know the, the mission to accomplish at this point. Ooh, DTs. Oh, is it, I think there's a turret in the main army, right? It's just a turret in the middle of the army somewhere? There should be, right? I mean, yeah. he's... I don't think he's hurting for that. He's got a bunch of scans here, too. Oh, he also has sh shuttles, or uh, science vessels, rather. <coughs> I feel like he yeah. has potential to just click on this base. <laughs> I, I think he's using the base to try to keep goading Mind into trying to defend it. That's true. If he kills the base, then Mind oh. just be like, all right. Yeah, but stop. look at this. As soon as 3-2 upgrades are done, Mind's going for it. He has insanely strong mech units. And the ground army is actually not all that high. D-Matrix oh. on the front Goliath to stall out the Zealots. But look at the carriers coming in from the sides. Does Mind have enough Goliaths? The answer is, well, maybe. The That's nine maybe. carriers. That's nine carriers. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, but I think the Goliath count might be even more -er insaner. -er. Yes, more -er insaner. I Goliaths. calculated it exactly there. Uh, I believe there's enough Goliaths to take out these carriers. He's just trying to focus the science missile, but he doesn't get it. Was that 4 HP? Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, it looks like he's about to lose one carrier. There's just so many carriers here, no regret. He's doing a really good job of controlling them, too. I, th I think Stork's actually going to crush this. It's quite close. I mean, that's a lot of Goliaths. The thing is, this can go like really one-sided really quickly, you know? Yeah. Just trying to make sure that he keeps the tanks back. Most of them are actually not sieged at this point, so now right, finally like sieging that too, up. Though. Oh man, this is so close. Mind has a really good position here, but the the question is the Goliath count. If there's like one too few Goliaths, then you just lose everything. Yeah, I think it's still the problem is economically speaking, Stork is not a far enough ahead to, to kind of be in this position. Unless he just reigns supreme with his army, which it doesn't seem like he's doing. Uh, looks like a lot of the siege tanks are going to get out. He's going to get this base too. I think economically, what does Stork have? He has the top middle base and yeah, the natural. He never really expanded beyond the top middle, which is kind of confusing because you always want to keep out expanding the Terran player. But I mean, it's so expensive to go for carriers. You're building nine of them. Hard to fit yeah. a base in there. That's true. But uh, OK, now this is scary. This is oh, these Goliaths are just kind of pushing. The, there's nothing really to stop them from being on top of these carriers. Seven carriers. Well, at least one goes down. Six carriers now. We're going to see five. Can have a five. Nice zealots. I don't know where, the hell, where these zealots came from, but they're really the MVPs here. Yeah, so it's a really kind of tenuous uh, relationship between the carriers and the zealots, because one's got to defend the other, and if either one of those fails, then the other one dies. Ooh. Nice one, zealot. Oh, a <laughs> drop at the 12. Oh. oh, this is gonna be really hard. I mean, the carriers are the only thing that can really defend this, and they're yeah, on the offense. This is kind of the nail in the coffin for Stork. He Although has. There's not very many Goliaths here. Was it four? Like There's if he four? can kill everything here, he'll be okay. But losing that 12 o'clock base is really the last kind of lifeline for Stork in this game. Yeah, I mean, if he doesn't get anything on the other side, he's gonna lose. But it actually doesn't look, okay, the Goliath count is getting up there. Is it yeah. six carriers? Yeah. I mean, he's got like six to nine facts pumping Goliaths right now. Even if these Goliaths die, I, I mean- The Stork's one thing is mind hasn't expanded that much either. You're right, but he's got... This base is critical for mind as well. He's got incredibly highly upgraded Goliaths. Oh. And oh no, oh, they walked no, all yeah. up on these carriers. 
It's going to be five carriers, and pretty soon it's going to be four. four. Oh, man, Stork cannot afford to lose carriers. It's still such a uh, like tight battle here, though, because if this base goes down, all the problem is that the economy for Stork is just not there. Oh, Archons. How many tanks are there? When did those come in here? Okay, well, I did not account for the Archons, and it seems like mine's macro has actually slipped maybe a little bit. Mine, oh. yeah, mine is not expanded enough. Yeah, watch out. These carriers are taking more damage. I actually base think... Base goes down. I don't know how many tanks there are, though. The problem is I haven't got a good shot of the tanks. There's five? I mean, you don't usually see Archons oh. here, but... Okay. This is a really weird kind of This switch. is a really weird fight. It's hard to call but now. But I think Stork may just barely have done it. Although the base is now mining in the bright side, which is really important base. Yeah, I mean, that is true. But he's got a position over these uh, oh. supply depots. Did he just get a carrier? I think he did. Wow. Nice pickoff. But there. he suicided all of his Goliaths. So, I mean, he's got like two Goliaths left. This base is so big, though. That's a huge base to have. If that base keeps mining, I think Stork dies. Yeah, oh, it's so like hard Stork to say. Stork has no economy right now. Yeah, Stork is pretty. That's why all Stork is here. building Archons. He literally can't build anything else. I like, mean, I, I guess they're okay, but the problem is, yeah, mine just rebuilds Goliath and he's okay. Uh, look oh, oh, this DT is actually an MVP. Oh this my god. This is so important. God. He's got scan. It's so weird watching. Hashtag just scan. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. uh. Every unit is so important for Stark because he actually has no income right now. Oh, and he's taking mine hits too. Well, oh, this is, this this is, is the fight that do he it. needs. Absolutely, this is it. Way too it. many Goliaths, He's though. taking a lot of hits there on those carriers as well. Actually, he wasn't. They weren't targeting the carriers, strangely yeah, enough. targeting interceptors, but he doesn't even have money to rebuild these interceptors. Yeah, GG. that's it, GG. Stork taps out. Mind takes game number one in the elimination match. Yeah, just a solid game, too. Mind didn't really pull out any tricks or anything. He just played fundamental TVP and played it really well. I thought Stork's idea was really good. It just Stork did not have the economy necessary. I think those run buys really inhibited him. He didn't take the middle base quick enough. Um, yeah, I mean, once he lost his third base, he was kind of just dead. Well, that drop was also kind of the nail in the coffin, too. Mine just knowing exactly when to strike. He had those two Vulture run buys, which were really clutch. He uh, One of the Vultures scouted the carrier tech, so he was right on time with Goliath numbers. Looked yeah. a little bit scary there towards the end, but he had already done way too much. I think if, if, if uh, Stork had more defense in, in his island base, he might have actually won that game. Yeah, like actually. Give, give, take that last fight, but give him a third base mining the whole time. It's much scarier. Yeah, he can keep rebuilding interceptors, rebuilding carriers. He yeah. lost a lot of carriers that game. Losing yeah. those first three really set him behind because he wasn't able to just push in and kill off that 9 o'clock base. Yeah, it, that's true. If he was able to maintain a high carrier count from that one push that did so much damage to his carriers, he might have just killed the third base and it would have spiraled out of control. I mean, that's kind of the big deal. Uh, also, if maybe he hadn't gotten the carrier tech scouted, he yeah. might still have gotten scanned, but that's it a looks tough looks pretty one. strong still, considering it got scouted uh, basically immediately. <laughs> yeah, like for sure. Did, there was not a single carrier out by the time it got scouted, so. He did make that decision to go carriers pretty quickly. Yeah, it was a really decisive decision. I'd like the decision to go carriers. It just wasn't uh, fully, its potential wasn't fully utilized that game. Man, at one point he had nine carriers. That's such an insane number. Uh, to get up to, but you know, he lost most of them. So, <laughs> game number two is on match point, and this is Stork's map choice. So, in theory, he's got something planned out for us. We have to wait and see what it is. Although, it looks like mine might need a small break because he stood up. <laughs> yeah, he did stand up. <laughs> I think he's taking a break. Yeah, that would be my assumption. You don't usually get up before your match. I was super excited to get into that game, mm -hmm. and then we're like, okay, well, no, never mind. That was very anti Never mind. Uh, I see. It's actually Intermine, but never mind. Anyway, he is running very quickly. I just saw him zoom across the studio uh, to take a, a bathroom break. But Someone's uh, handing him a build order right now <laughs> in the bathroom. <laughs> slips it under slips the stall. Under the stall. It's like, by the way, here's the build you're looking yep. for. That's what's happening. Because mine definitely needs new build orders. Actually, I'm really impressed. I think mine has had some really interesting builds today, especially in his games against Modesty and... I, th I mean, game number one against Stork was basically the most standard way you could yeah, play. Yeah, it was pretty standard. There was no tricks at all, basically, the whole game. Yeah, I mean, he got, like, maybe a little bit earlier Goliaths, but he was already I getting mean, that was fast he scouted it, too. I mean, he opened with a couple, but that's also to push back uh, you know, Reaper drops and stuff, too. And Reaper drops, yeah. They're just pretty good units to have early. I don't know what else to expect there. Uh, I think Stork... 
may not have been confident in playing a long macro game there. Maybe he thought it was like two behind after losing all those dragoons trying to kill the tanks off. But mine played that as I standardly as possible. I think he did lose possible. too many gateway units to go into arbiters. You know, like normally you need to recall a ton of yeah. uh, art or you need to take huge fights. But you, he lost a ton of gateway units, and that was immediately when we saw the fleet mm -hmm. peak and stuff. So it makes a lot of sense, but. I'm not sure why you really go in for that. I think maybe he thought the tanks might have been either unseized or out of position, but they weren't. So yeah, yeah, I'm not sure either. Yeah, and also he knew it was happening, and he just kind of fight it, fought it anyways. Yeah. When like he's like, oh, everything's siege, and there's mines and committing? vultures, and I'm just going to fight anyways. And we're like, yeah. you don't normally do that, but you know. At some point, discretion is the better part of Valor, you know, so maybe time to <coughs> back off there. Uh, but it looks like mine is back in the booth, and we should be getting on to our next uh, game here in just a minute. Uh, what are we going to change up? Uh, if I, I were... We're going to see a very standard game again. <laughs> I, mean, I would expect that from mine. I think mine is by far the kind of cookie-cutter player in between these two. Uh, maybe there's the opportunity for Stork to Cheese, kind of like that in-base pylon we saw versus Modesty. That would uh, be a very big mistake, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, especially since especially mine... Especially down one. It seems like mine is playing, like, very safe because uh, in some sense you just have to hit 3-2 on three bases so I don't know right. what his plan is there I will say it's a little bit harder to keep expanding on Eddie because you have to put all that effort into getting the island base but uh, yeah obviously <coughs> it's a much different uh, game on match point yeah looks like we are ready to go into our second game uh, the map is match point we're Unless going to this pre-game screen whoosh. That's right. We're about ready to get into our pre-game screen. Do I intro the pre-game screen? I don't think so. Is he wearing his Protoss shirt? Is that what that is? The he is. Shirt? But mine is just wearing a white shirt. What does that mean? Maybe that's the Terran one. Maybe. I think it actually is. I thought Terran was red. No, it's Zerg's red. What's Terran, blue? I think, blue. It's, I think it's white and green. Well, let's get into game <laughs> number two on match. Okay, I, th thing. I thought they were You're introing again. I, th I thought they were introing you. Okay. There's a meta here, guys. We're let me when the game let me try this again. We're gonna let him try it. There we go. Back, game number two. And in the upper or bottom left hand corner is Mind. Upper right hand corner is Stork. <coughs> Indeed it is. Rapid. Indeed so, it is. So even though it says match point, it's not actually match point. But the map is match point. And Do you think the map maker just wanted to mess with people. Haha. Well, hey, it's really cool if you have it in game five, right? That's true. That's true. Maybe that's what they were thinking about. But as far as match point is concerned, uh, the biggest thing is controlling these like high ground platforms. So if you can get a position up on there, it can really threaten your opponent's third base. So a lot of times that's kind of where you see the big uh, pushes happen. Uh, although this is definitely a map that you can split in half. Yeah, it does seem like that's very much the case. Also, it feels like zoning out to our armies will be a little bit easier because you can catch them on ramps and other things like that. Uh, we'll have to see how it's played out. Yeah, I would say the best uh, part about this map is that at least as a Terran player, you can kind of take three bases uh, pretty easily. Although I would say the third one can be a little bit rough to defend. It's actually quite low base count altogether. Yeah, this is not a 35 minute game map, uh, for sure. <laughs> There's a lot of, uh, very few maps, I guess, or bases. I guess that makes a bit of sense that you would pick this if you're Protoss then. Although, is it though? Like, maybe he has something <laughs> planned. Well, that, that's the uh, the idea in theory. In theory, Stork's got uh, some ideas here. So one thing you can do is there's a lot of different uh, wacky proxy locations here. And maybe if this were Artosis playing, then you'd be more guaranteed to get a proxy. But Stork's proxies have not been working out this game, so <laughs> probably not. Damn, was that a, was that a shot at Artosis? He's All I'm trying to say is defend himself. Mind would have a worse chance winning this if you were playing against the B Protoss player and didn't know it. Nice. That. That is true, though. That I think that's pretty true. much objective at this point. That is objective. I'll give you that one. You made an objective claim. Uh, so the probe gets in, sees everything. Surprise! A standard mech opener. Um, yeah. 
I mean, if you don't see a gas at this point, maybe he was there almost in time for a gas deal, but you got to leave your base pretty early. I think he built that. the refinery early just in case, too. Yeah. <laughs> I saw he went down before the racks and he didn't really finish it. So Nobody wants to be forced into bio uh, as a Terran player. I don't know, man. I see uh, sometimes, if, especially if your opponent is uh, going for a 12cc or a uh, 12 nexus, you yeah. can proxy your barracks and it looks like it's there to deal aggressive damage but not really uh, it's just there in case your opponent's trying to get greedy a and he's not <laughs> so i think both players kind of respecting That'd each be other a little bit silly though I, I mean it does it definitely does happen there are greedy protoss players mini does this a bunch where he'll randomly go 12 nexus and i think sharp was the guy i remember seeing punish him by just you know marine rushing him because it's yeah, super potent i feel like i remember this too but it's <coughs> not what we have here so both players playing exactly as you would expect. Let's see what Mine's able to see when he gets up there, because I don't think there's anything I bet weird he's happening. See a gateway <gasps> and a cybernetic core. I know I'm going out on a on a whim here. With a range upgrade, spinning. <gasps> Looks like it. So scary. <laughs> uh, I don't actually think we have to worry about any sort of factory aggression from Mind either. I think he is thinking like I do that. You just sit on two bases, then three and chill until 3-2 upgrades finish, mm -hmm. you're looking good. Yeah, should see a command center go down. I would be surprised if it doesn't. <gasps> He's not one basing? Say it ain't so. Say uh, it ain't so, wrap it. That's I'm saying I'm it saying. is so. You're saying it is so, that it's one base? No, it's definitely not one base. This probe is actually still in the main base. That's the thing probes do, man. You try to kill it, you build like tanks and battle cruisers, the probes still just Clearly shit. mine doesn't know that, because his Marines are all sitting out Run, unless he's getting ready for the Dragoon. Well, it's definitely more important to not let your... Uh, oh, he's not sitting on the ramp. Yeah, what? Why? Okay. Uh, so if you're... Okay. I have no idea. <laughs> Surprise, Marines. Um, but You'd now he's the on the ramp. It would just so. be better to be on the ramp, <laughs> which he did now. Well, I mean, either way, I think they do basically the same thing. So pushing the Dragoon away is the mission for those Marines. And because of that ramp, it's a little bit easier to do. So probe scouts basically everything, but nothing crazy same time yeah the biggest thing is you want to scout the expo or if there's an expo if there's a second factory or something like that and yeah. both players see everything is basically as standard as possible yeah so I think this this time the ball is in Stork's court I think uh, I think mine feels comfortable playing the game he was playing like playing a standard game and Stork kind of just fell apart last game so I think he needs to do something here I think that's going to kind of be the theme of this series. If you guys are looking to learn how to play the most standard PVT or TVP, respectively, th this is kind of it. I mean, these are two kind of iconic players in that regard. I wouldn't say, you know, Mind has ever, like, super ultra giga impressed us in the last maybe year, but he is always extremely solid. And back in the day, he was very well known. He was called the Scholar Terran because he was Scholar such a big brain. I mean, also his name is Mind, but he was super smart. It's an interesting way to name yourself Mind. I mean, Mind was the guy that you studied. If you ask Artosis how oh, many Mind uh, replays he's watched, the answer is thousands, or just games. Thousands? I really? would say easily, for sure. He's just that good. Uh, mind, just to clarify that. Uh, <laughs> but for Stork, it's kind of the same idea. I would say that he is a very sort of methodical player. Uh, and he definitely does like to go for his, uh, his clutch carriers, but last game, couldn't I quite I mean, keep him alive. I thought last game was quite a good attempt. Like, it was really close. Just like, uh, again, another series of unfortunate events. <laughs> Stork is uh, somewhat unfortunate, let's put it that way. But hey, now it's time for Mine to get out on the map, plant some mines, try to hold back Stork from doing any more of those gateway shenanigans when he's trying to break through with Dragoons. Scan uh, the main base. I don't know what's in there, but probably nothing, <laughs> nothing crazy. He's looking at it right now. You can see his camera. Well, I mean, if you're really trying to rush carriers, this is maybe when you're going to see something. But yeah, you would have to definitely, or I guess the other thing would be going for any sort of a uh, uh, drop tech. Yeah, I mean, he should be pretty well prepared for drop tech in general. I mean, that's basically the only thing he needs to worry about. It's very rare that he has to worry about some weird dragoon push or something. He just needs to worry about a reaper coming in and killing everything, or a drop of any sort. It can be really annoying. My question is for Stork, if you're if you don't feel like you can play the long game, which in general Terran is pretty strong the longer the game goes versus Protoss, you should at least figure out a timing to go for it, right? You're gonna go to two base arbiters. You're gonna try for like some big gateway bust. You're just gonna mass expand. I don't know what it's gonna be, 
but I think Mind is pretty solid on his ability to get two and then three bases with good upgrades. I want to see Carriers again. I think, honestly, Carriers are pretty good against Mind specifically, but either you have to A, not get them scouted, or B, have a good position to micro them on. And in general, the third base is usually what's vulnerable there, but I think the third here on this map is not actually that good against Carriers. Yeah, I mean, the, the one thing, too, to note, is this third doesn't have a gas, right? The one that uh, Stark took? Yeah, so if you take the 6 o'clock base, then no. But if you take the uh, 6, or if you take the 9 o'clock base, no. 6 o'clock base, yes. There you go. There's my answer. Okay. Thank you, Rapid. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I never learned how to tell time, so. Uh, yeah. I okay. had one of those fancy digital watches. Well, I didn't know what you the You do need meant. a lot of gas for carriers. That is that is factual. Okay. Right? You can check that one off the, the Brood War fact sheet. <laughs> We're yeah. If you're playing Brood War Bingo out there and you want to know if carriers take a lot of gas, check that one off right now. They do. They take a lot of gas, guys. Okay. So right. we might see some kind of gateway pressure is basically what I'm saying. Because he is taking the easiest base, but also mineral only. So... I mean, you can definitely do a lot with minerals that fuels infinity zealots, which allow you to either be aggressive through dropping zealots on siege tanks or something like that. Uh, it also allows you to like run through minefields and in general just build up a big scary gateway man army. A gateway man army. Oh, arbiters. Okay. I mean, yeah, we are going to see that arbiter tribunal come down. This is maybe the more standard way to play PVT, but it definitely relies on your ability to either hit these sneaky, sneaky recalls or get good stasises off in uh, in battles, which can kind of work against you sometimes if you make a stasis wall against your zealots. Yeah, I mean, I think. Uh We'll probably see some recalls. I think that's a pretty safe assumption there. And I think we'll probably see some stasis. Well, it depends on how pressured uh, Stork is uh, feeling. Because last game, the 2-1 the push oh. never really hit. But this time around, uh, you can see Mind is pushing out much more aggressively. I wonder if this is actually like a big commitment or if he's just kind of fainting. Looks like he's fainting mostly. Yeah. Well, taking that high ground is really important. Yeah. Uh, because it pressures your opponent's uh, 12 o'clock base, and it also defends yours if you take that nine. Yeah. He's also just kind of playing it safe. I mean, it's a million times harder to attack up a ramp into siege tanks. <laughs> it's basically impossible. Uh, pretty quick fourth base from Stark. I think all of this makes sense. Also, second armory. So we're probably going to see a really passive game from Mind, at least until his upgrades catch up. Makes almost no sense to throw down an armory and then attack. Yeah, and this shouldn't surprise anybody. I mean, Mind is playing almost exactly the same game, with the exception of those Goliaths uh, that we saw in, uh, in game number one. Yeah, I don't think we'll see too much action until the Arbiters come into play. I think that's a big tipping point. Mm -hmm. Usually on Arbiters are like when you really are able to do stuff against mech. Before well, then you can't really, it's like ramming a wall <laughs> if you attack into them. Yeah, and unless you have a battering ram, that's highly un, uh, recommended. Which but we hey, don't have. That's right, no battering rams in uh, StarCraft. So yeah. Haven't researched that technology yet. Uh, hey, but look, if Stork is going for uh, Arbiters, that bottom of the map is wide open. You can slide Ooh, an arbiter way around back. there. Oh, is he gonna get it? Yeah, no. No. Yes. Kinda. Maybe. Kinda. Two HP. Kill him with a probe. Ah. Uh, no. Is never a two mind. HP vulture considered a run by? I mean, technically, it did run by. Although it doesn't technically have legs, so calling it a <laughs> run by. Like the mind, just being annoying. <laughs> this is the jerk. It's two HP vulture, and it's still dealing damage. This is the vulture, man. It doesn't need HP to deal damage. It has so little HP that Protoss Look, the probe's didn't even literally gonna it. kill it. <laughs> it actually had so little HP, Stork didn't even respect the fact that it was a vulture. I know, right? Well, that's definitely what you get for not respecting vultures. It's your first mistake. Maybe also your last. Oh, oh. oh. Okay, he tried to do that fancy stutter step. I guess he did it, but he had a million dragoons, so it wasn't as fancy. I like how the observer checks if it worked every time. He's like, did it? Did it work? Scan's going off. I'm pretty sure he knows about the Arbiter tech at this point. So if I were mine, I may <laughs> put a turret or two in my base. You see that fourth command center location is quite nice. Yeah. It's tucked behind the mineral line. Whoops. Uh, yeah, and like I said, this is a map that gets split in half a lot, and that is very good for the Terran player. I'm really interested that Stork picked this map, you know? Because it feels like, uh, theoretically, it just feels like a really good TVP map with, for the Terran. You know? Well, in general, because you want to control your high ground areas, a lot of times a Terran's main army is going to be pretty far away from his main base. And sure. if you slide along oh. the bottom half of the map, whoa, get that observer up there. Um, if you slide along the bottom of the map and get into the main with a uh, recall, 
that could yeah. definitely be a good way to deal a lot of damage. That's true. We'll have to see. I mean, it seems like that's his plan as well. But I do feel like if Mine knows that that's his plan, it's pretty easy to stop a, a, you know, a recall from doing a lot of damage. It's very rare I see a recall just go off and kill everything because there's just usually a million mines in a main base and a million turrets or yeah, whatever. Does maybe. he have mines laid in his main? I, I actually didn't check that. Does. If he knows his arbiters, he should. Yeah, it actually looks like he just sent a bunch of vultures down there to lay a few mines. Because there's nothing more satisfying. Too. <laughs> yeah, he is actually taking that one. Nice. I mean, that is kind of how you expand just because of how far away by ground it is to take that base. I'm not sure if it's teachable from the Terran main, but I guess we'll find out. Terran knows exactly where this army is moving. Uh, that is a lot of units. That is quite a few, specifically massive amounts of zealots. I think we're going for the stasises. I think we have like 70, 30 zealots to dragoons in that army. <laughs> I thought he was going to go for a recall, but it looks like he's expanding and then trying to bust in here. I think he's going for a bust for sure. He needs to... Uh, trade these units so he can produce more. He's currently capped supply box at max. I mean, hey, maxing out, very good, but I, what are his upgrades? I'm not uh, totally sure on that. I'm not sure either. If he's sitting at like 3-1 or something, then we're, we're chilling, but... Uh, you might go for a two-prong thing. Looks like he's trying to find the possibility for a recall, but he's not going to find it. Nope, not here. I, I think he's just going to oh, force gonna the issue. It. He, Oh, man, if he lands on mines. Oh, the EMP doesn't oh. go off in time. The oh recall completes, and there's a bunch of Protoss deep in that Terran main. Yeah, and I think he's going to try and hit a two-prong. Once the Protoss, or the Terran responds to this by pulling his army in, yeah. he's going to attack the third base by the looks of it. Yeah, and if mine moves too much down to clear out his main... Which he has to, honestly. He has to respect this. Yeah. And at the same time, Stork can just replenish this army very comfortably. I mean, this is a relatively cheap oh, army. He's trying to zealot bomb on top of those tanks, but they're unsieged. It's working, though. Uh, he's yeah, flying he's as much time as possible. He's looking at his main is basically in shambles right now. So he checks the fourth, makes sure that there's not a fourth base. And now right, he's going to come down fight. here. So many zealots. There's, they have legs. They're moving so quickly yeah, on top of these tanks. tanks. There's nothing to buffer for these tanks either. All the uh, oh, no. uh, vultures got sent down south. And that means this base gets busted wide open. Yeah, and even if he's able to deal with this army, Army. The damage has already been done in the main and the third, and he can just replenish this army very comfortably. It's 100 supply to GG, 170. wow. Mine taps out. Damn, Stork. What a bust. Yeah, what a solid bust. That is true. Probably I mean, one of David. I was actually surprised. That did a lot more damage than I thought it would. Like, uh, well, he, he found a spot where there was, like, no mine, surprisingly. Well, it's not rocket science that when you get recalled, you need to defend it, but also, wait, you might be attacked somewhere else. But that was such a sharp timing, and uh, honestly, I think mine maybe kind of overplayed his hand there by sending so many units out of his third. Yeah, I think uh, I think it was kind of a, a mistake that the recall spot was so good. You, like, imagine there were a couple mines there, and all the dragoons just explode immediately. You, like, there was just no mines there, where yeah. where he ended up recalling. All the zealots ran forward, and then the mines went off on the zealots, and all the dragoons kind of maintained their their stance, forcing yeah. a huge transfer into the main. You know, there's a couple ways you can look at this. On the one hand, uh, you know, maybe mine didn't reallocate his units properly. On the other hand, you can look at uh, Stork and his, uh, you know, incredibly complicated use of attacking one location and then attacking another location <laughs> in the game. Incredibly complicated. So, uh, yeah, first you teleport your army into the Terran's main base. Second, uh, you attack him. What yeah. is dealing with the army you just recalled? Hmm. We're going to head out to a quick break here, and then we'll come back with the... the uh, I don't... The next game in our losers match. Welcome back, everybody. It's KSL. We're in the losers match, <laughs> which doesn't mean that our players are losers, but that they have lost games. It actually means they're losers. Damn, that's so yeah. harsh, Jake. Th I mean, I'm I'm a player. I can say that. I've been in the well, losers. I guess you match are technically before. a player. Yeah, yeah. You have lost games before. The casters are like, oh no, we got to call it the lower match. <laughs> no, it's a loser match. They both lost. With the uh, well, yeah, because some people call it a lower bracket match, but there is no lower bracket. You're it's just a losers match. Yeah, you're you but just lost okay, the game because some of them, one of them is not going to be a full loser. They're going to be a half loser. <laughs> I mean, hey, at least you advance a little bit further. So 
This match will eliminate a player from KSL, and that's already kind of crazy because we're getting there a lot faster this season than we did last season. But mm -hmm. we won't find out who the second player to advance or be eliminated uh, is today. We'll have to save that for a little bit later on. But we have to finish this series right now. Currently, uh, Stork is actually pulling it back. That yeah. was a really solid bust. Unfortunately, I felt I feel like you know his play, though storied and nuanced, uh, wasn't something that I think will Wasn't work remarkable. again. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, he re he expanded pretty greedily, but I think that was a kind of a reaction to how passively Mind was playing. Yeah. And when you get away with just building lots of nexuses and not a lot of units, that puts you in a pretty good position to max out with that scary amount of gateway units. Sure. And then once you get a recall off like that, then you're solid. <laughs> I mean, the recall, I think the recall had a lot of, not luck involved, but... Well, he, look, he, dude. He ran by the... The defense. There's the, like there was mines mine. and turrets yeah. right in front of him. There's a, a science vessel with an EMP. And the EMP it. goes off yeah. and it doesn't stop the recall. So, yeah, I mean, basically every everything went <laughs> his way with that recall. Yeah. Imagine that recall just gets shut down. I mean, the game is nowhere near it finished. So all we're saying is that Mind needs at least four ways to stop a recall and then maybe he'll be okay this time. Yeah. Like last time he had mines, turrets, and EMP. Maybe if he adds like Goliaths in there, then he'll be okay. But I think honestly, he just he just needed more mines, something like that. Okay, all right, let's get into it. Our next game is going to have Mine in the upper right in the red and Stork in the upper left in the blue. This is Fighting Spirit, so super standard map, which means we <laughs> may actually get a pretty decently long game here. Yeah, spawn locations are quite interesting for TVP, though. Uh, close positions is always interesting. Well, that natural, oh, let's talk about that. Okay, for, uh, for Mind, how you trying to defend that against carriers? That's all I'm <laughs> trying to say. That yep. is not not a not an easy one for sure because there's just wide open space and high ground and it's hard to fit turrets behind that mineral line. Good luck, buddy. Yeah, that that's gonna be really annoying. It, this would be probably one of the maps, or at least one of those positions you wouldn't want to play out a really long and passive game. Uh, but you know, you could always hit a two-one timing or something like that on this map, with especially close positions. It, it wouldn't be bad at all. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see how it plays out. Well, I would say, hey, it's not cross position, so the push timing by ground is uh, shorter, makes it a little bit scarier. Um, yeah, I don't see Mind as looking to play aggressively at all. Like any of this, like two faction anagonry or like some one 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 weirdness. Like, eh, I don't know. Um, but for Stork, he is definitely looking to get maybe a little bit greedy here. He did not have a lot of units when he was busy expandering all over the map, so. Let's see yeah. if maybe mine can punish him a little bit more. Maybe Though a slightly faster timing. That map kind of stops, I think, a lot of aggression from mind. I yeah, mean, like he, he had enough gateway units, and considering how the map layout works, it would be really hard for mine to just push across the map and kill him, especially if it wasn't a two-one timing. Well, so if you so there's a few timings you can hit. There's like three-two, which is obviously like the latest big macro timing. Yes. Two one's probably pretty common, but you can also go at plus one, which is a really fast timing to hit that's supposed to. Like you really gotta nail a weakness in your opponent's build. Sure. Because um, if you get out on the map and like speed zealots, like you're not fast enough to get there before zealots can like run all up on you, you're gonna have a bad time. <laughs> sure. I agree. That was my people's way of explaining TVP. <laughs> uh, your people's way? What does that mean? Like, I, I I'm a man of the people. Oh. And so I'm trying to speak to my prime demographic, right. my fellow kids out Can't there. Can't use too many complex words out there. That's right. I have to write my speech like uh, for a sixth grade reading level. <laughs> Whoa. That's the way newspapers Shots are fired to the chat. N newspapers you say are most of them are sixth graders? So that's definitely chat. not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm so say sorry. I am saddened by the lack of arch intellectuals uh -huh. in out chat. There. <laughs> look, all I'm trying to say is that like, uh -huh. if we had a way to look <laughs> at the proportion of chatters based on which race they play. Okay. There may be one race that is more highly represented in chat. <laughs> okay. That's Where's all this I'm going? trying to say. <laughs> Wait, I want to hear what race is highly represented. 
You know, I, I'm going to leave that open to interpretation, Jake. Oh, okay, okay. I trust any and all intellectuals who are willing to weigh in with their erudite opinions. Erudite? I don't even know what that word means. It's erudite. Erudite, my Troglodyte. bad. Troglodyte. What are you? Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I, can't, I, I can't even tell. He could be making these words up. I have no idea. You know what a Luddite is? It means you're afraid of technology. So a anytime you see somebody go for a four pool, that's definitely because they're afraid of, the t of teching at all. You're actually kind of one of those in StarCraft I II. I see. Okay. You're actually afraid of teching. Uh, for Stork, he did make a lot of gateway units there, but he did tech all the way up to Arbiters, and I noticed that he was incredibly skilled at being able to press the upgrade recall button, <laughs> and then to move his mouse cursor down, click the recall button, and then move it to the place he wanted to recall uh -huh. on the screen. Oh. Uh, he's rushing him this time. He's trying to bust the bunker, and I think he's actually not doing a terrible job uh, yeah. of it, but he lost the Zealot a little bit prematurely, and he should be a little bit, uh, you know, hesitant at going any further. Maybe he's going to keep making Dragoons here, but that's really only to kind of, like, annoyingly pressure the bunker if he does anything with it. Yeah. I mean, there's not much of a window here. It's pretty well defended. He did a little bit of harass. I mean, the, the Marines are injured, I guess. <laughs> but Nexus comes down on the way. I mean, it's pretty standard. Uh, yeah, I think this will. Uh, what is that dragoon doing? <laughs> That's like Twitch plays around? dragoon micro right there. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna walk over there. That actually reminds me a lot of a carbot dragoon, where it's just kind of wobbling all over the place. So I'm just gonna move this way into massive amounts of marines. Like, chill out there, dragoon. Like, once you die as a zealot, you reincarnate as a dragoon. But once you die as a dragoon, you die in real life. That's the rules. <laughs> is that how it works? Yeah, that's, that's what happens. So you only want to you want to die once, so you're a better unit, or what? Well, I don't know how many lives you need as a Protoss player. I don't either. I don't either. Well, the trick it's a trick question. You need to get a life in the first place. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Got uh, him! <laughs> you need to relax. You're, you're literally alienating one-third of our audience. Oh, least. it's way more than one-third, my dude. Oh, God. <laughs> Every time a Protoss player, like, runs in and recalls, like, 95% of chat is like, wow, that's so skilled. You notice how he just ran through everything and killed the guy? <laughs> 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 and this was the last time we saw Rapid on the <laughs> Our Everybody entire production staff is Protoss players, <laughs> and they come and, like, just throw me off the broadcast. Nice. Hey, anyway, this might be a little bit more aggressive, and I think this is a reaction from mine to say, no, Stork, you're not allowed to triple expand off of one gateway this time. No! He's coming to try to stop him, and this is very scary because Stork didn't have any Dragoons soft containing at the front. Yeah. You're supposed to stop that with four Dragoons in the middle of the map, Forcing this back and back and back. I mean, he's he at least isn't like, okay, this is not bad. He's pushing it back now, like you yeah. said. Yeah. I actually thought he was only going to have four Dragoons. Five makes it a little this bit more iffy. I mean, if he sieged up, he would just lose these tanks. He's, I mean, that was basically repelled. What were you saying, Rapid? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought that mine was going to get a little bit further out there, but it's good to see that, M that Stork was not skimping on the units, trying to cut quarters to get an extra base early on. No. He was okay, push that back. And, you know, mind, it's clear that he wants to maybe play this a little bit more aggressively. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. It didn't look like he was able to really accomplish a whole lot. Well, I'm, I wasn't that aggressive either. He was just kind of posturing. I don't know if he ever really fully intended to go full on aggression, but I mean, it was only two tanks. It's not like uh, he's pulling all the boys and. Yeah, for sure. Hey, look at this. Stork is going for something different yet again. I really like that. He's mixing it up, he's building. Uh, a Reaver, and he will attempt to fly across the map with that Reaver in a shuttle uh -huh. to kill lots of workers, no regret. He will. I mean, it, it looks like it, uh, it could do a lot of damage. I think it's all about if it gets scouted or not, right? Well, I think it's pretty easy to prepare for it if he gets the scout. Yeah, uh, in theory, you want to at least get maybe an observer, maybe just send a unit to that 9 o'clock location, or 12 o'clock location, because that is where you're going to build that scouting pylon or put a probe or something to see what's up. Well, both bases are blocked, so you're not taking the third anytime soon, at least. Oh, Get look, if that pro builds a pylon down there, that would be super big brain, because that lets you see if the uh, shuttle is trying to get out through a uh, like a sneaky pathway. And yeah, I think he did actually just put down a... Oh, no, he didn't. He's Wait, just, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the probe at the 9 o'clock location. If he builds a pylon, it can see if the shuttle's... Yeah, because a lot of times you'll try to send the shuttle like a sneaky route out through the middle of the map. I don't know. He was just kind of scouting down there to be annoying. Uh-huh. Turns out that was mission accomplished. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, it looks like he's going to yeah. try and take a third base, but <laughs> they're both blocked. Actually, no, I was totally wrong about that. Sorry. I yeah, you confused me. I think you mean like a supply depot or something, right? Right. So basically what mine did is he stopped the third base from coming, off, from coming up 
by picking off the <laughs> Oh, what? That was sick. Yeah, he detonated the mine before now taking damage. Now he can take damage. the Nexus. Nice. Yeah. Okay, anyway, mine made a sick play by stopping the third base from coming up to the 9 o'clock loca clo location. I'm so sorry. Uh, but instead, it's going to come up at the 12 o'clock, and this is maybe a little bit more vulnerable of a base. But hey, if you're already going to be dropping over that area... I mean, what if we go carriers? <laughs> Oh, yeah, I mean, that's also a, a... It's nice. You can defend your third and be aggressive at the same time. That would be kind of nice. I actually would have loved to see carriers on this map, but also it is the other be reavers. base. Like, I think another thing is, too, like, you're, if you want to take the other third, your shuttle had to go down there to clear that mine, which is kind of annoying. That is true. All right, we'll have to see if this does anything. I mean, it shouldn't, in theory. It's been fully scouted. But <laughs> but that's the great thing about being a Protoss player, man. I you can knew have you were gonna everything Protoss scouted. I knew it. I and knew it. still, I felt that. I felt. Look at this shuttle rocketing in there. The skill. Okay, come on. This was not the Protoss. He was just completely wide open. You're right. Okay, pick up, chase the SCVs. And that's a dud. That's nice. <laughs> oh, we got an SCV. Okay. Punish to my right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Protoss is too strong. <laughs> Okay, to be fair, he could have hidden the god scarab and killed everything there. You kind of have to let, like, you know, Jesus take the scarab, as uh, the case oh, may be. The scarab got punished this time. Did I think it could have done a lot more damage. Oh, that was a nice suicidal vulture. <laughs> it's like, don't worry, guys. He's taking Hold one my for beer. The team, okay? I got this. I see the reaver. I got it. That okay. vulture gets buried in a special cemetery for that. Uh, so. Although, all in all, I would say that Storg, even though he had a crazy sick opportunity, which is kind of what you're looking for as a Reaver player, he didn't actually kill all that much with that. Although, yeah. I will say, Mind definitely clenched during that. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's time. <laughs> if, one, if one shuttle works, Dude, this two is the Protoss is Mind, all right? More. Let me go through the Protoss brain flow chart for oh you, God, all right? I go. had a shuttle. I got in there, and I didn't kill anything. So how do I kill more stuff? If I kill not enough with one shuttle... Maybe I'll kill more stuff with two shuttles. Rapid, who hurt you today? <laughs> Protoss Did players. Did you play a ladder clearly. today? <laughs> Three shuttles. Oh my the God. brain <laughs> on this man. So large. Why even get recall? You know? Do we even Stork's, need recall? Stork's brain is so big that there's a whole faction of Earth humans that try to convince the other ones that it's flat. <laughs> okay. That's how big it is. I mean, it looks pretty big. Things orbit this man's mind. Well, <laughs> not mine's mind, that's for sure. Stork, three shuttles. Three shuttles. Three times the potential here. <laughs> if only they were war prisms, then they'd be really happy. <laughs> well, hey, let's not make the shuttles any better, okay? So, the question. Do you think he just drops on top of this? <laughs> no regret. Do you think he's going to go <laughs> down a ramp and drop? Watch this. Oh, no. Here he we go. He actually is. The pinnacle okay, of Protoss play. If this does anything, this is just, this is fun. I'll, I'll agree with and you. And boom goes the dynamite. Uh, well, actually, everything just died there. No regrets. Well, so how effective you would you say this down is? down a ramp into how many tanks? Four? Would you say this is working <laughs> or I like the part where you drop the reaver off. Working. This is not working, Rapid. No, 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 but those are your only two options. Is it working or working? I guess it's working. Because I can't those are my tell. Only two options. It kind of looks like he took three shuttles worth of units, lost them all. Lost them all. And then he, like, he picked up his reaver, but then he's like, wait, I saved but, a unit, and then he dropped it off. But again. no regret. Let me ask you. Surely, if you're going to go for a strategy like that, uh -huh. you must have a follow up plan, right? Yeah, it's, well, he still has the shuttles. <laughs> so what if you're. F so, so if. There's that uh, wonderful adage, if at first you don't succeed... Make shuttles? Yeah, make more shuttles, drop more stuff again. And the, the, the crucial part to this is that you keep doing the same thing over and over again, hoping that it will work and that you will achieve a different outcome. There's a word for that. <laughs> is he, are the shuttles... Like, the shuttles don't even do anything. Look the word it. is confidence. Okay, now they're doing things. Never mind. Okay, yeah, this is actually not a bad bust. He's getting on top of the tanks. The third or fourth time he tries this, man, it is going to work like he wouldn't believe. Oh, I guess that's working in quotations. That is actually not doing a... Th this is dealing a non-zero amount of damage. Oh. No regret. Whoa! Oh. Whoa! Where did that come from? <laughs> you see those scarabs, man? You thought those were... <laughs> what? The brains on Where those scarabs. Where did that even come from? From downtown. I feel like... <laughs> I, don't need, I feel like we need to watch that uh, YouTube video of Artosis, like... Oh, he definitely loves StarCraft right here, man. Oh! Uh. Wait until this Arbiter recalls for the win again. Yeah, that, this is just unfortunate. I don't even know what to say. Like, mine basically... 
I thought he was holding that like a thousand. He was. He literally got dropped and then had five tanks at the bottom of a ramp. <laughs> and the, the Protoss tried to break the bottom yeah. of the ramp somehow. Well, hey, third time's the charm, man. Here we go, up a ramp again. Are there mines there? Does he have detection against the mine? No! Yeah, He's going for it. Over there. Wait, Come where? On. Give, him some, give him some slack. There's one on the ramp. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, nice never try, mind. Rapid. All right, all right. All you Protoss apologists out there. Okay, he has an observer. <laughs> I see it. Uh, well, let's see if he can find another way in there. Because I, I think at this point, he's just sort of making sure that mine doesn't get out of control. Because, hey, we're going back in again. <laughs> the boys are back in town. They sure are, no regret. Oh, he's going into the main. <laughs> what? <laughs> There's nothing in here. Why is there nothing in here? <laughs> we knew there were. We found the Terran weakness. It's that he doesn't put units totally out of position in his main. I Look mean, at this Reaver, man. Oh. Was triple shuttle. <laughs> the power. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, into the middle of the line. Oh, show me these everything. scarabs. Show me what the Protoss player deserves right now. Not a scarab. Oh, uh, it actually killed something. Yeah, Amazing. I was actually surprised about that. Is, is he going to kill, kill more stuff? Oh, he sure is. He sure is. Rapid. His ability to pick up <laughs> and then drop this Reaver repeatedly. <laughs> insane. Look at that. Oh, wow. I th oh, no, no, no. If he gets one scarab shot off right now. Oh, it dies. Yeah, it dies. Nice. Ah, okay, I'm so frustrated that the Reaver had something that countered it eventually. Uh, Rapid, are you okay? I feel like <laughs> I feel like you've actually been punished today. This game is actually and so crazy because right look at what Mind is having to do to hold on here. He's getting dropped over and over and over again. And Stork has now double, ex well, not double, but he's gotten a fourth base up behind this. And look at what he has. He has a massive amount of gateway units in the middle of the map, uh -huh. an Arbiter, and the ability to recall those units somewhere else. He even else. knows where the Terran is weak right now, though. Like he can just recall the main. Yeah, the answer is any of his bases, ah. no regret. But let's see what this drop does. Oh, no. It's the Terran Reaver. <laughs> and the Terran oh! Reaver is way better than the Protoss yeah, Reaver. Look at that. The, the Terran Reaver is so broken, the Scarabs never miss. They literally never miss. Look, he's going to pick it up. Wait, you can just do this and get away? Broken. Terran Reaver. <laughs> okay. Most amazing Reaver in the game. Oh. Okay, Except for well. when you get punished. Yeah. Why, why would he go down here? Well, okay, I guess the there's no can't shoot up. Yeah. I feel like he's playing with fire right now. He is certainly, uh, but he will get out with that dropship. Eh, or will he? he oh, the last won't. shot. Yeah. Oh, good job, Dragoon. Killing it. He practiced his whole Dragoon life for that one moment. All right, we'll have to see if they, if we can find the damage he's looking for. I mean, he is taking all the bases. It's going to be really hard for mine to take a fourth base. Uh, especially with his posturing and positioning on the map. I feel like he's almost going to just try and break them again. I mean, sometimes two bases is, or three bases is really all you need. He should actually have two two upgrades finishing here momentarily. I think he has a second armory, right? Yeah, he should. I mean, he's only at 1-1, one, one, so maybe he's stuck on one armory, but I would expect... He's 2-1 now. Yeah, okay, so 2-1, so he is actually just single armoring this. 2-1, not bad. Upgrades, two plus two is what you want. All right. Now, you see he has an Arbiter and a Shuttle, so this is going to be really hard for the Protoss <laughs> to control. Do you like it if I do it too? I love it. You're, you're really backing Am me I up. Am I doing it right, guys? Does <laughs> chat love me Love me now? Okay, okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. Trying to bulldoze through the mines. The stasis? Arbiter, where's the stasis? I'm waiting for Two it. Two tanks. Okay. Nice. And the nice Zealot drop too. Uh, yeah, the, the Zealots are actually honestly doing a little bit more damage. Nice Mind Drag in there, but there's still a ton of tanks. It's a very deep tank line. There's still more gateway units coming through. Yeah, but this damage is already being done. I mean, if you can replenish all these gateway units, you should be fine here. There's one tank on the high ground, which is honestly kind of MVP at this point. And oh, he's getting pushed back. Yeah. Though there are going to be some Dragoons in the main. Oh, never mind. He's got it all on one hawk. Yeah, why would you not sack those four Dragoons to go further into the natural? Ah, uh, with these siege tanks I sieging don't up. I it at all. I mean, considering they just died anyways. Yeah, I think you probably were better off sacking oh those Dragoons in the natural. <laughs> that Arbiter has three HP. Nice. I mean, it's pretty much worthless at this point. Unless it recalls. I don't know. Let's hold our breaths here. Yeah. Ooh. Well, now we get a chance to see the Terran inevitability start kicking in. 2-1. Good upgrade count here. And he's added on a second one. So we're going to see 3-2 here momentarily. And that is... So there is basically an infinite amount of bases here for the Protoss. So he's... he's like, the game is going to continue. Mm -hmm. That was not a terrible trade. I mean, he killed some tanks, I guess. Oh. Uh, okay. Okay, gets the mines. I was really worried that everything was really close. explode there. Yeah, almost game. Oh, okay, that's the dumb dragoon. Uh, takes out those mines, but hey, you're just gonna secure the bottom left-hand corner of the map for Stork. And if he can get all of those bases up, build some gateway farms, 
really start getting that macro on, then that's a pretty good spot to be against mine, even if he does get a bunch <laughs> of damage. <laughs> he just cancel his wall? <laughs> yeah, he had to wall in with, I think, like, what is that, four or five pylons? <laughs> and he canceled it when he realized the push wasn't happening. Nice. Looks like uh, mine is going to attempt to take a fourth base now. It looks like how he's going to try and split the map or something. This is Stork's opportunity to possibly engage this, though. Look at those clumps. <laughs> I yeah. can see the stasis You know, that already. worries me, but he only hit two tanks on that last stasis, so... Uh, justice was not technically served. I <laughs> clear, clear, clearing out mines in the middle of the map uh, is pretty uh, pretty crucial. It means that you have the mobility you need to maybe flank this army if it gets too far out into the middle. Right. But the big uh, thing to watch out for is going to be either A, recalls once the army pushes out, or B, enough arbiters to stasis and cloak a large gateway army. Yeah, when the gate when the army comes out like this, it's really like the surrounds can be really scary for the Terran player. Now, this is either where Stork runs mind over or loses oh. everything. Oh. See, this He's trying to go for that EMP. Yeah. Gonna get the Observer. Nice. Nice. Oh, but he's got oh, another no. Arbiter going into the okay, third. It, okay, if this goes off, that's impressive. Oh, oh, but it's on top of mines! Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Never mind, okay. nothing matters. The recall gets in guaranteed no matter what. Hey, there are some tanks here. Nice D-Matrix to keep that tank alive a little bit longer. Still some damage being done here, but this will eventually be I'm going to try to counter our toasts. Even when a stasis or even when a stasis or a recall goes off, it doesn't do anything. You know? Terran's just so strong. Is what do you know? He had units in position to defend. The counter to recall. Even a recall goes off, guys. It just doesn't do anything. Buff, buff Protoss, please. Well, I mean, on the upside is that Stork is probably powering off of like eight, nine gateways at this point, so he, he can replace that army pretty quickly. The problem is he's on even supply with a Terran, and when Terran units are just straight up better, it's a tough one. Yeah. I mean, he's on, let's see, he should be nearing 3-2 at this point, and that's really uh, kind of go time for, for Terran. Oh, Maybe he's just waiting. Oh, it's the shuttle time. Here we go, if recall doesn't work, shuttle's gonna get you. And he's actually got his gateway army in position to stop the reinforcing vultures from coming in to try to defend that. A lot that. of dematrices possible and a lot of EMPs though. This yeah. is, I feel like it's starting to get to an unbreakable Terran army though. Yeah, Especially is, with the way Stork kind of just throws himself. That's not the weak point for sure. We're yeah. only at 2-2 two -two still. We haven't hit 3-3 three -three off of those double armories yet. Um, so maybe that means there's a chance. <laughs> I don't know. There it is, plus three weapons finishing. And now Mind really thinking about heading across the map. Yeah, I think Mind has the opportunity to do so now too, because there's been so many inefficient trades. Even this, I don't know what's going on no, right now. No, I don't know about this is either. He now that is asserting your dominance if I've ever seen one. Is For that a sure. command center floating into the middle of the map? It surely is. This is actually no asserting dominance. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, once you have this much and you've also stopped recalls, I, you can start to think about playing this. The only problem is, I think he's one, just doing it for the memes. If one recall gets in, Stork's still got a chance. So, uh, you know, vigilance is the key here. Look at this sure. map. He's just claiming all this territory in the middle. Well, the push is here. It's oh, time. Is that a, is that a <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, he's way in, in the enemy territory there. I don't know what he was planning on recalling, and he's like, nah, never mind. Ah, uh, darn, darn it. It turns out if you fly your Arbiter over the entire Terran army, then eventually it might get EMP. It's okay. I didn't want that base in the top middle. Ah. Ah. Okay. Nice. Arbiter is going to retreat now. Oof. Just barely. So <laughs> this is not the fight you want to take as Stork. Uh, he's going to go he's for it, though. He's it. Here we go. Does he actually have any energy for stasis or anything? I no, don't just think so. It. So I it, think this fight could have been more efficient. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie. You know, no regret. Might I'm be no onto Protoss something. expert, but I think if we No, no, no. I think you're a Protoss Arbiter, expert. If we utilize the Arbiter in that fight, it would have been better, but I think it's still pretty bad. So, oh, how is he going to deal with this Arbiter, though? <laughs> That's you too. Rapid, that Arbiter will take you out this entire Terran You know, if he did more Arbiter. than five damage a shot, you might... Oh, oh, my God. That is asserting your dominance, my friend. It's asserting it even more than it was before. He decided not to take the middle. He decided to take the less mineral base. He is kind of flexing on him at this point. Oh, no, this is a flex. Yeah, each individual one of those tanks is He being floated his command center over to the base he killed to take it. Oh, I mean, hey, this is a good way to deal with it. Just put your units <laughs> on top of the other units. I mean, the pro <laughs> he's going to deal with this army, I guess. I mean, yeah, but he deals with that army, but can he deal with this army? Uh, with I mean, drag, it's possible. Drag. Yeah, but oh, I mean, if you, if you lose all your units to mine, yeah. then probably <laughs> not. 
<laughs> I mean, hey, the supply is still even, no regret. It, yeah, it is even, you're right. Oh, look at the Arbiters are actually killing tanks. He has no anti air. Not a single. You know what we need? Rapid. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say something. Don't don't be shocked. All we right, need, hit, we hit need scouts. We need scouts rapid. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna veto that mass gonna, arbiter. Gonna See, Look this, at the arbiters are actually killing things. This is the nascent. Oh no! This is the nascent value of the arbiter, and that is that eventually, twelve of them will kill things. Uh, he's not there yet, but eventually. Yeah. So <laughs> the base has been secured for the Terran player. That's right. That was also my opportunity to get my usage of the word nascent into a broadcast. So I got to check that one off my caster bingo chart. I just ignore all the big words you say. Hey, it's only two syllables, my dude. Nascent? Yeah. It means unrealized. Why did you just say unrealized? Because <laughs> then people would understand me. Duh. Oh, I see. Okay. So DTs, the answer of any great Protoss player to being behind in a game. And what do you know? He defends an entire three bases with one unit. I feel like the Arbiters have done more damage than all the gateway units combined. And without, we're not even talking recall or stasis. No, no, we're like the attack, the little five damage attack. Beam That's thing. right. That's done more damage than all the all the Protoss Literally, armies. Literally, the Arbiter would be a better unit <laughs> if it didn't have an attack at all because it would be less prioritized by the AI. I'm loving the Arbiter DT combo. <laughs> the synergy's crazy. <laughs> Double cloak. I mean, that means you have to have two science vessels to reveal oh, it, right? Oh, he has the counter. That's he has two the counter science double vessels. science vessel. It reveals it twice. But now we just need two arbiters. Oh, there's two <laughs> arbiters. It closed the, the counter. Twice. This is unreal, guys. Unreal. These players are this just crazy. This is eight-dimensional chessers. That's like chess and checkers played together. OK, here we go. Here we go. All when right. behind, recall time. If at first you don't succeed, bring two arbiters next time. One recall. Where's the second recall? Do it. I'm waiting. Does no. He have, does he have anything to recall? No, oh, he didn't even get it the last beat. second. That's three HP. All right, well. What's we, in the shuttle? We got the units in, no regret. What mission is in the shuttle? Mission accomplished. Is it just zealots? Oh, it is just zealots. I'm overwhelmed by the amount of damage this is getting done. <laughs> it didn't do anything. Okay, so honestly, we're a little bit memeing that recall. I got in, it was annoying. It pulled the entire Terran army back. But really, <laughs> he's taking the middle base too. I mean, he's he's gonna try. So, I mean, I think uh, I think that was. A something Stork needed to do? Because if Stork just sits back, he's just dead, right? Uh, yeah, for sure. He has to keep being proactive because there's that's the only way of stopping Mind from pushing all the way down. <laughs> you land the base, you lift the base. The base goes down, the base goes up. I, I can't explain he, that. I don't think he wants to land it here. I think he wants to land it at another Protoss base. He just realized that this is not a base the Protoss is. I think he probably yet. wanted to expand there, but actually, so Mind kind of slipped a little bit on his macro, uh, for sure. I mean, he is mined out in his main and natural, so for all intents and purposes, he has a two-base economy at this point. I hope Stork takes back his base in the top middle, <laughs> reassert his dominance. They just keep... I, well, I, I think priority number one is defending the three bases you have on the southern half of the map. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm just saying it would be a nice meme to just take that base and build a nexus there. Oh, there have been quite a few nice memes this game, to regret. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I like where the command center is placed. He's just going to take the top half of the middle base because building it in the middle is too <laughs> its too risky. It's too rapid. hard. That's right. It's too risky. We have to take the top half of the middle base because that's way more defendable. Well, it's got two bases worth of minerals and gas, so shouldn't you need two like command centers to mine from it? Yep. That's how it works, Rapid. All right. That's, that's Actually, what I Actually, the bottom one is the Protoss one. Oh, that's right. They split it, right? Yeah. Well, sharing is caring. This is called Sharecraft, right? Sharecraft. That's, that's the sequel. Don't spoil it, guys. So, so yeah, see the Protoss player is just trying to secure his half of the the middle base, <laughs> like like an honorable mem like member of the Kala. <laughs> what the do we? How do we even commentate this game? Like if we're gonna be objective commentators, how would we commentate this? The, this map is uh, I don't know. I feel like it's hard to be an objective commentator with this game. I feel like I'm developing an acute case of musophonia. Yeah, yeah, look what th look that, that one up. up. There's your ten dollar root for the day. Uh, anyway, the up. zealots finally doing what zealots do, and that is something. But will it be enough? That's the big question. No regret. Yeah. Now I think mean, about if I said anything of substance in the last minute. Probably not. Uh, the Terran player is pushing the Protoss player back because that's kind of the stage we're at in the game. But surely there is a dastardly arbiter waiting somewhere to recall. Or not? <laughs> Wait, there's actually not. I'll go. I think yeah. he's actually flying the Arbiter right through the middle of the map. Is he going to get EMP'd? Is he going to get EMP'd? Is that I'm Arbiter going to get EMP'd? Uh, of course it is. Oh! oh! Sick as Stasis! Gets both 
And tanks, actually, the mines are actually going off on the tanks. Yeah, and actually, the Zealot's getting deep in that tank line. Oh, Storm. Storm, ooh, he's got one more, maybe. No, the High Templar got picked off. I mean, he's he might trade with this army, and his economy is not terrible. Uh, tell me more about trading with Dragoons in a mech army, no regret. I mean, uh, the, he's trading. Rapid. Do you not see that Arbiter? How's he going to deal with the Arbiter? Huh? Give me more of those trades. Look, That's all I'm trying to say. I think you actually are happy with that trade of your Stork. Considering Actually, he, probably. Yeah, you're memeing and all, but... Oh, wait, there's another half that stays to see. Right. right, so he gets that back after about a thousand million billion years. But eventually, the woolly mammoths will unthaw, and then that's the scary time for the cavemen left over. That's the protoss, because they're <laughs> dumb. Get it? Uh. Get it. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is actually pretty good for mine, but I would say uh, he's still a little bit low on the unit count. I yeah, mean, this Stork is, is mining off now. of 50,000 bases right now, so... If mine can shut this one down, it's his gateway to winning the game. A storm, <laughs> a storm drop in the middle of the map. Was that is that a storm drop? Wow. Yeah, I guess that's actually a, not bad. He's getting a couple of CVs. The problem is he's going to lose all of his economy. This is basically all yeah. the economy in the bottom left half of the map or quarter of the map. Yeah. I believe the verse is what profiteth it a man if he storm the SCV line but lose his own main base. I can't, I can't keep up, man, with your memes. That's an uh, interesting way to commentate. <laughs> Whatever works, right? We have to play to our strengths. Right. Uh, so for right now, Mine's strength is that he has units down killing Protoss stuff. But does he have units defending his base? Are these probes in the army now? Are I these think army they probes? are. We're I think in those the are army, army probes. Now. We'll yep. always have our chow. We'll, we'll never you know get it's rich. bad when we have probes substituting our army. Okay, those storms are nice, nice too, yeah. if I do say so myself. The problem is what <laughs> comes next? Uh, the answer is probably not a lot for Stork. You know he actually has next? nothing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it. It comes. It's called GG. It's coming next. I mean, look, they have almost even unit counts, and I'm talking significantly double digits. No regret. Yeah, but it, the problem is the economy isn't here anymore. He just sacrificed yeah, almost all of his probes. Yeah. Also, the Terran units are better. Terran so. units are better. That is how it works. I'm not memeing either, guys. Three three tanks just kill a lot of stuff. So. Yeah. There's Stork one has, base mining here. Yeah. Stork has actually no money. Also, he repositioned the base in the middle to mine all of the minerals now. That's that dominance, you know? That, yeah. That's how you know he's in a good to position. To be honest, though, neither player has any money. Well, uh, well exe now. except for now, now Mind has the middle base. Yeah, but in like 30 seconds, there's going to be a maxed army. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, no regret. I mean, it's getting there. I mean, so, the economy is way, way better. I like that Stork, instead of trying to fight that middle base, which would be essentially futile at this point, is instead trying to retake that uh, 6 o'clock base. I think that's probably the way to go, uh, because if you try to do anything in the middle of the map, you're probably dead. I mean, yeah. Right? I, was there any way he's not probably dead, though? Look at all these tanks. You know how he wouldn't be dead if he had six carriers right now? I feel like I've seen that at one point in this series, right? <laughs> that would be sick. If, just if he like tech switches off carries. of one gas, actually, he doesn't you even have sick. the gas at that base. Okay, this is this is probably the game-ending fight here. EMP on the storms. That's oh, gotta be it. There's only three yeah. dragoons here. Yeah. GG. That's it. GG. Stork taps out, and mine will win that game eventually. What All right, a, here's uh, my thought. Okay. We have one Stargate, just Hitting building carriers the entire game. He just sneaks a carrier in every now and then. It's the long con. The long con, right? And then eventually just has like nine carriers. I like it. With one Stargate. And you never see it coming, right? Yeah, you never see it coming because you're like, oh, he's just losing army. You yeah, know? you're looking for a bunch. Uh, and he already had the Stargate for Arbiters. So you think it's for Arbiters, but no. Yeah, Carriers. exactly. That would that, be the big I, brain play. I just revitalized the game. Should I tell Stork my plan, my uh, strategy? Uh, so I'm sorry, we're trying to keep this fair. If you gave him uh, an obviously broken build, that Coach would really Norga, yeah. upset the uh, balance of power here. That's true. So hey, so, you know we're still a lot of memes, in it. But that game was actually so that game was really aside. crazy. Uh, yeah, we had uh, you know the macro slipped a little bit at a few points, and uh, for for uh, Stork, he actually did get a lot of really good usage out of that mass shuttle strategy, which is really interesting. I haven't seen that yet, at least today. Yeah, uh, I've never seen like I mean I didn't think it did much honestly though. Like, yeah. the, the three shuttle stuff, I think it could have been utilized better. Mm -hmm. Like, the first fight, it was actually the worst possible fight you could possibly take. Like, you could not yeah. ask for... There was five tanks on a concave <laughs> on a low ramp, and he right. sent his Dragoons up a ramp and then tried to go down a ramp. Two ramps. He couldn't even retreat, really. Yeah, no, that was kind of... Uh, so that was a little bit strange. <laughs> all in. Uh, well, the thing is, it wasn't even all in, because he then did it again. 
yeah. and got so much more damage. It would have been better second. if those three shuttles just went flew into the main because the main was already kind of taking damage before. I mean, it's easy to say as casters, right? Because we can see everything. The uh, making the decision to fly three shuttles worth of stuff all the way into a Terran main, like you're pretty. Uh, I mean, he was pretty point. out there all all game though. Well, yeah, I think that's maybe that's the new Stork philosophy is like we're just we're just going for it. You can three shuttles, his, man. You can sum up his story in four letters. What's that? You, I'm gonna get you, let you guess the four letters. Uh, Yolo, come on. Oh okay, yeah, Yolo. What okay. else could it possibly be? I don't know. LMAO, <laughs> like, come also, on. Also, also maybe a political. It has to I don't be know. Yolo. We it can't be anything else. We definitely had both Yolo and LMAO moments there. We're really speaking the kids' language here, so you nice. guys all understand what we're talking about now. Mm -hmm. Anyways, <coughs> uh, let's get back into this game. We had to take a brief break for mine to uh, head off. For another break, I guess I would uh, probably need one of those after <laughs> this game. I to take a break. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, there was too much Protoss there. I've got to detox uh, afterwards. <laughs> so he's going to run out for a nice barley kale smoothie, get all the Protoss toxins out of his body, and then come back for more. Aren't, aren't detoxing, isn't that just a meme? Is that a meme? Is it a meme? I've heard it's a meme. I feel like my body probably has lots of toxins in it with my, the way my diet is. So I'm not... Uh, I'm not ready to do Only if you play Protoss, am I right? <laughs> I got it. Uh, Good job, Rapid. No. We're not doctors, guys, so please don't take our nutritional advice mm. uh, for what it's worth. But I actually just want to get into this uh, next game. It's going to be on Silf Silphid. Nice. Yeah. He cheated. Hey. He was thinking about Don't give away my secret. We have secret. monitors here, but you guys can't see them. How dare you? You're tearing down the caster fourth wall. Next thing, they're going to know that we have private personal lives and are actually humans that feel feelings. Sometimes I go to sleep in my house after after Whoa. a cast. It's crazy. Wait, you don't go to play more StarCraft after you cast? No regret? Oh, I do that, but then I go to sleep in my house, not at the studio. Wait, why would you sleep when you play StarCraft? That's true. Right? You know it's the greatest That's game? That's true. All right. I think that we are about ready to get into the next game, so... Let's see how good I am at predicting this. Whoosh. Okay, that was within a second. Yeah, but we're going to that thing where we continue to talk, but it shows the map. So it's not the next game. <sighs> nice try, Rapid. Some people are just impossible to please, <coughs> Twitch chat. You wouldn't know anything about that, right? Right? You calling out Twitch chat? I would never. Don't make me call Twitch chat on you. <gasps> I'll you wouldn't it. dare. I'll do it. <laughs> okay, the next game is Neo Sylphid 2.0. <laughs> this is game number four. It's up. Uh, mine is up 2-1 with that epic victory. And uh, we're moving on to a nice three-player map. So let's get into it and see if Stork can tie up our series and bring us to yet another game five. Let's get into game. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going into game right about now. like to say I nailed that intro by the you way. You stole it from me. I was going to say now, but then you said now. You but now it looks like we were like caster synergy. Oh, that's right. Shh. They'll never know. <laughs> anyway, the map is Neo Sylphid 2.0. I got to call it by its full name, like when you're a kid and you're in trouble with your mom. And in the 12 o'clock location is Mind, and in the, what is that? It's about 350? No, it's like 830. There 350? Hey, I was... 3.50. I never learned how to tell time as a kid, okay? Do you know where 3.50 is on the clock? Probably in a different location, I'm guessing, right? Like it, it's like, not even... The other spawn is 4 o'clock, isn't it? Is that even a real time? 3.50? Why don't you just say 4 o'clock? Isn't that the date <laughs> like, of the Ides of March? Been, I would have given it to you if it was 4 o'clock. <laughs> you know what? You're I'm right. going to start this by saying, like, a latitude and longitude. Hope that that's correct. Uh... So anyway, mine versus Stork, mine's up 2-1, and I think his solid, methodical play style seems to have the edge over Stork when Stork doesn't greedily overexpand, max out super fast, and run into his main and natural at the same time. You know what I'd love to see? I'd love to see a two-fact. Shake it up a bit. You know, Just go for a timing attack or something. That would be uh, guaranteed a build Stork probably would not expect because uh, mine, I think, is pretty well characterized as a solid defensive wait for upgrades kind of player. Yeah. But you're right, that would catch Stork way off guard for sure. Also, the, like, the map spawn locations everything, I, I don't mind it at all. I think it'd be interesting. Yeah, I mean, you it's definitely a bit of a gamble, have that though. option. It's, he's up, though. I yeah. think you, you can always afford to take some gambles if you're up in uh, the series. 
Yeah, it's for possible instance, like clear clean three one if you just kind of take out a build and win with it. Yeah, this is not the game I would go for anything super cheesy if I were Stork. No, Stork has to has to play standard or go crazy. Like if he gives up, he can go crazy. But there's no like in between. It's either insane or it's just standard. <laughs> like there's no like I'm gonna do this. Well, I mean, you never like half all in, right? Yeah, that would be weird. That would actually just be worse than. It's playing so either. weird. It just might work. No. No, it definitely won't. So everything looks completely standard up until this point. Uh, so I have no indication that Mind is ever going to go for anything aggressive. I mean, look, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just stay uh, with a uh, kind of methodical play style. But I did like in that second game that Stork kind of exploited that by building, what, like two Nexus with maybe two gateways in production? Right. Yeah, this is kind of why I'd like to see a mix-up from Mind. So I think there's a lot of potential for Mind to be aggressive. And we saw him be aggressive in the first series, so with the proxy factory on this map. I, hey, I think that worked out pretty well, uh, in that series at least. But hey, it's a different matchup. I actually love the way that Mind is playing this uh, because he seems to be figuring out, wait a second, as long as I just defend against all the things trying to run into my base, I'll be okay. Which in theory is great. In practice, it's not so easy. So, is this just a spotter pylon or is this gonna be crazy? See Only it? time will tell. Well, he first has to figure out where on earth his opponent is, right? Does and Mind know that there's a missing pylon? This could be like just a sick meme. Well, you have to scout the pylon number, and you should be able to see that. So maybe you're just... Oh, oh my goodness. Nice. Now, well, he's got the pylon. I think the upside <laughs> is that that was probably just a like a, a hidden pylon to hide a pylon, not is actually for anything. going up there, though? That is. I think he's going to hide a second pylon. Now, that would be really weird. That would be a nice meme for sure. But it's actually just a delayed scout. I'm not sure. I think the pylon's actually so just a mess the big brain it. play is you put the Dragoon or like another probe on the other side, you pull the Marines out with one probe, and you slide the other probe in. Aha! But he's not going to do that. And, and that wastes a lot of money. time. The scout. Yeah. So the SCV is doing exactly what the probe did not do, although it should be getting picked off here. And boom goes the dynamite. Yeah, so nice scout sees there's no natural expansion, so mm -hmm. he should be a little bit scared. Also, the pylon is just weird. I still don't get it. I think it was to maybe mess with the Terran a bit. Yeah, exactly. You're going to hide your pylon. They think, oh, it's all scary. But then it got scouted instantly. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Nexus comes down. Still pretty standard, but kind of a Dragoon pressure. Yeah. Uh, everything is exactly standard. The bunker coming up at exactly the right timing. Range is going to finish here pretty soon. Whoa! Uh, and the Dragoons are just going to pressure to force him repair. Oh my god, he almost ran by that. <laughs> he saw that there was a <laughs> barracks. <laughs> that would have been such a punish if there was just no barracks there. He just runs by them. That would be so I annoying. mean, honestly, if he had picked the other side to try to run by, he might have gotten it done. But also, if you do that, like, come on, man. Is that how you're winning games? Is yeah. that what your strategy is? You run by the bunker? Okay. Uh, but now, <laughs> now there's a tank out, so good luck with that one, buddy. Robo on the way. Yeah, so we're probably going to see some similar stuff to last game for the Protoss player. I think this is how he was opening last game as well. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully some drops. Second factory on the way. Hey, does this mean it's a two-fact no regret? Yep, that's how it works. Nope. It's literally two-fact. <laughs> literally. I mean, that is impossible to argue with. So yeah. checkmate build order enthusiasts. Um, build order enthusiasts. Does anyone call themselves a build order enthusiast? Oh, you got to know there's somebody out there that has that in their Twitter bio. Right I feel next like that's something you put on your resume when you have literally nothing. You go to your uh, Twitch chats, LinkedIn, and it's got esports consultant followed right afterwards by build order enthusiast. Esports consultant is like yeah, someone who teaches their grandfather how to do esports. Well, so it's apparently esports everybody in the world. Two years of experience teaching my mom <laughs> how to play StarCraft. Look, you don't hate the player, hate the game. That's all I'm trying to say. Esports consultant. And you can't hate the game because it's StarCraft. And it's the best. Anyway. Uh, as far as the game is concerned, we're seeing everything be exactly as you would expect it. Uh, we're going to see an Observer come out here pretty soon. Pushback mines, if there were any, there's not. It's a bit of a push here. Well, this is almost the same thing that we saw last time, but this time there's three tanks instead of just the two. And yeah, that, the is a, that is a big increase. That is 33% more tanks, right? Whoa! The math. Incredible. Uh, so the job of these Dragoons is to get out on the map and stop this push from being realized. Wait, is it 33% or is it 50% more tanks? It is 50% additional tanks. But it, it, the total and volume of tanks increases by 33%? No, or it if by you 50%? have two and you go up to three, that is a 50% increase. 
but the total amount of tanks is higher by look. <laughs> what? Do I look like a rocket scientist? No regret. No. Okay, so let's see if Sork can stop this. He's got to try to pick off mines and marines in the front to try to keep those tanks from getting into a good spot. Because right now, mine's in a great spot. He's segmenting that northern base off from the rest. Yeah. Is he fully aware that this base is here? I don't think so. I feel like this is a really strange base to take. Well, that the is engineering bay is about to scout it. Yeah, that is the big brain base for sure. Because you definitely expect there to be a third at the mineral only instead of that base right there. He's going to try to wall it off and then maybe go for reaver drops. And Okay, well, yes, that is clearly what he's going for here. But let's see how effective this is going to be because that is a weird base to take. I don't even think mine knows about it. I don't know if the, eng the engineer base is so close. If the engineer base just moves a little bit, it'll see a third base. <laughs> Wait. Surprise! Could he put siege tanks in his main? No, right? It's almost that close. Siege tanks do have a very long range, no regret. You are correct about that. That would be that. sick. You just put a tank in your main and it deals with its third base? This is either the biggest brain base or the smallest brain base. I'm not sure which. But get your three to five heads ready in chat because it will be one of those two. You think he, he goes for like three shuttles again? Dude, that would. Does he already have two shuttles? He already has two. Nice. I actually. I, I, Wait, he does, he, does he see this base? I don't actually know. I don't think he knows it's there. I can't tell. because it's. I don't know. I hope that engineer bit just scouts this. That'd I hope sick. it doesn't scout it, and then 25 minutes into the game, it runs in. Oh. No. <laughs> so close. Are you kidding me? I mean, your engineer bit would never go over there to scout. I mean, yeah, well, why would you? All, he scouted he, that big push was specifically designed to cancel a base building at the mineral only uh, 10 o'clock base. Right. Instead, the big brain move, of course. Oh, he missed. Oh, no, he, he tanked the mines, and now Could've he can actually. He them up, but you know. One oh, more. shot on the turret. Yeah, he, so he, he kills the turret. Oh, the repair comes through, so it doesn't burn oh. down. Third scarab, what the biggest brain, and he gets it. Now, the point is, how do you still pretend like there's not a base here when you're running your shuttle back over there over and over again? <laughs> I mean, you're, where else are you going to run your shuttle, though? Actually, I, think I guess that's no the idea. point. <laughs> he still has no idea. If he did anything tank. else with it, it might be too suspicious, right? Well, you're not flying it south. I don't know. This is interesting. I don't know why he didn't just take... Oh, I guess it's because of the minerals and gas. That makes sense. Never mind. I can't believe the size of the brain on this man. <laughs> Nerds are orbiting this guy's noggin right now. He's going to take the normal mineral base now. <laughs> and the timing looks like... The best like part is he took that base. He didn't even take the gas, though. So, like, why? Why did he risk it? Scan goes off. I wonder if that was actually to scout the third base or not. Because he might think he's getting two base all in here. Well, I guess it wouldn't be, like, an all all in. But whatever. That base is the biggest brain. Let's see if he can deny oh this base simultaneously. Oh, my God. These, simultaneously. these vultures, that's not the way you come home. Yep. That's for sure. For sure. Does he have the... I think he has the shuttle over here, too. This could be really yeah. scary. It's only Donde five is sa, that shuttle. Carrier's coming up as if it could be any other tech choice. Awesome. I'm excited. No, this is actually amazingly great. Because if you do have that base, then you can just fly the carriers up to the edge and deal terrible, terrible damage. So Yeah, there's no real way to push it back either. Where's, where's my man, the armory? Uh, <laughs> it's somewhere. I'm trying to keep a track on upgrades. I know he has it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he has Goliaths out, so obviously has an armory. The question is at one or two, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Um, is it one or two, and what are the upgrades at right now? Flying the shuttle in. Reboot! Taking out the turret. Nice. nice. Uh, but let's see how far these can push in here. The supply depots, crucially enough, are not clumped up, so he can't, like, kill four at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Got to spread your depots out just in case. Let's see these tanks. They're going to siege, picking them up. Nice. And he's out. The engineering base still, still has no idea that base, base yeah. is there, yeah. Citadel. Interesting he's adding the Citadel on with the uh, <laughs> fleet beacon. Uh, he's just getting everything. Okay, here's the second armory. See, mine is playing this long-term high upgrade game. No. No, my man. Yeah, this is. I feel like this is a lot scarier of a game for mine, though, overall. Like, the last time the carriers went down, there was already, like, a pretty big economic disadvantage. But right now, I feel like the economy is just way better off of the back of these carriers. Oh, of course. Uh, Stork is in an insane position right now. Every Protoss wants to be here, but unless you kind of pull the wool over the Terran's eyes with a thing like that hidden base, then it's you know hard, easier said than done. Um, but I do think these carriers are really going to maybe not blindside him, but that base for sure is going to give Stork a way higher unit count than mine thinks that is possible. Yeah, that's true. Especially carriers are the last thing you expect to. Like, uh, gas count's pretty, pretty uh, inhibited if you don't take this base. <laughs> but he still doesn't know about it, so. 
Well, there are already Goliaths being added on, which uh, is kind of nice. But yeah. I, I just don't see the defense here. I'm still also interested in that shuttle with the double reavers because that has not been taken care of. And I think he, he could actually either poke in from the other side, which would be one option, or like just keep trying to get little bits of damage done while waiting for the carriers. Because these carriers still take a little bit to come online. Yeah. Because it's only Yeah, you need like the critical mass before you can actually go. You, you never show up with like one carrier or two carriers. That'd be weird. It's only two Stargates, right? Uh, yes, thank yeah. you, Observer. Answering He's doing my question. strat. What's your strat? Remember sneaking in the carriers. I thought that was like a strictly one Stargate ah, strat. I mean, it's one Stargate, two Stargate, same thing. Yeah. He was listening. <laughs> He's listening to the English cast. Obviously. I claim this. This is called the No Regret build, guys. Whoa. Is that like the Tasteless build? What's the Tasteless build? Nobody knows. That's, that's why it's uh, a mystery. So nice. wait a second, where are we at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, going up to like nine facts, which is obviously going to be an insane amount of Goliaths. But <laughs> is that really what you need? Oh, you just scanned the carriers. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's a big scan. Immediately the carriers are moving yeah. out. The jig, as they say, is up, no regret. It's yeah. time. Now, so with, the, with the no regret build, though, you don't want your carriers to get scanned. Ah, that's definitely a, a crucial yeah. uh, it's part important. of the build. It's really important. Now, the, I'll let him know next the thing time. is, mine doesn't know what Stork's supply is right now. He doesn't realize he's almost maxed out and has carriers. So let's see what the play is here. Okay, so he's going to try to push with the Reavers and then, uh, like, Zealot Bomb with the shuttle. And then carrier counterattack. And then carrier counterattack all at the <laughs> same time. How can one man. Have so much so power. Oh well, yeah, also defends gonna be very difficult for mine here. Oh Vulture wow. run by. Whoa. Never seen speed vultures get surrounded so quickly. But one got through, and sometimes that's all you need. That's true. So in theory, Stork should be trying to take these southern bases, but uh oh he's not because he took the one in Look between. At all the turrets, he's not having any of this. Well eventually, yes, he figured out there was a base there, so surprise. Actually, he still might not know. I don't think he knows still. That is actually so crazy to me. What? It is pretty crazy. I mean, he, even if he does know, though, there's not much he can do anymore to pressure this. So the the interceptor count is very low. Uh, dropping the kill off. <laughs> Whoa, okay, that's uh, good Wow, minded. that was a sick mind drag into the vulture. The, okay, he still hasn't taken any carrier hits because he's outside of range. It just <laughs> looks like... <laughs> Look at these interceptors. It looks like... Well, the problem is the interceptor count is so low that it's almost just as good as killing the carrier. It's actually a little scary, though, because it... Did he just lose, does he not have a shuttle here? No, he doesn't. He's actually going to lose the Reavers. Okay, this is a very scary timing. Like this is the two-one timing, and, and we saw the carriers have no interceptors. All these. So uh, he, he also ran the zealots down. a little bit too far in. Yeah, now to they a lot can't of really buffer units. Oh, he's got to retreat. Yeah, he's gonna have four carriers, which is an okay amount, but you really want six. The upside is that mine did not build anti-carrier numbers of Goliaths. He built just a few to stop shuttles and stuff. Uh, he has like a bare minimum. But you got to be careful here. The good I mean, thing is the intercept is enough to, to like not like he's not going to get jumped on anytime soon, right? Yeah, but if you know your opponent's going carriers, you just want a ton of Goliaths. Um, he's, uh, Stork still has a better economy than mine thinks he does. The only problem is that I think Stork didn't or wasn't able to put on enough pressure, and now there's going to be insanity Goliaths. So yeah. good luck with your four carriers. Yeah, I mean, it looks like he wants to be aggressive here. I don't know if there's room for that though. Uh, oh, he's pretty far in, actually. So he this might is, lose a carrier. Yeah, there's also not high ground there, uh, even though it looks like it. It's just a ground barrier. Uh, so it's not a place you can micro your carriers in and out. Yeah, immediately retreating the carriers, I think that's a good call. It's yep. quite scary if the uh, vault or the Goliaths get on top of these carriers. Yeah, the interceptor count is growing now that six carriers are out. So I think Stork will have barely enough. He is taking a fifth base as well. So... If he can stop this push, I'd be impressed. There's no Arbiters either, so no Stasis, no oh, Recall Threat. Oh, here comes the... Oh, he's thinking about it. Yeah. He's really thinking about it. He's I mean, he's got such a big, sexy brain. Of course he's thinking about it. He's getting ready it. for that big flank. Oh, that's a DT, too. Look at that sneaky it DT. It is. That would be really sneaky. I mean, mine's Detect, so he's not going to, like, try to run around the map with that. But maybe there's <laughs> a lack of detection. I don't is know. Is that a Vulture he just dealt with the carriers? Yeah, nice. That's obviously what the carriers are for. Uh, this doesn't look like enough Goliaths yet to deal with this, you know, but it's high, getting there. There's High Templars or Dark Templars uh, here, and actually there's no detection. He hasn't scanned to take out the oh, DT. Oh, no. You're not going to scan now, too. This is like, there's so much going on, you're not even going to hear that DT. Yeah, the DT is actually getting a lot of damage, and there is a High Templar oh, yeah, here. He did scan it, actually. Nice. He got it. I guess maybe he heard the uh, sound the effect. Yeah. That's very rare, though, when there's this much going on at once. So Dragoon's trying to take out Goliaths in the front. The Carrier's trying to take out the tanks, but in the end... Yeah, but all the Carriers get out. 
I mean, yeah, but you lost all your gateway army. Well, did you, though? Yes. Did well, I mean, you, not though? all of it. Yeah, he didn't lose all of it. My point is he can't use his gateway army. Now, this is going to get bad, though. If he takes this base out, that's a critical base. Uh, yes. Uh, obviously you might actually just click on it. I mean, honestly, he's already gotten quite a bit of mining value out of it, so you know, maybe not the worst base for him to lose. Uh, but you're right. He does want to defend this. He's trying to uh, well, hold Okay, yeah, we got to clear out those cannons. No, 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 he did that to get the interceptors out of the carrier so that he can micro them better. It's just, it's a thing. Um, it's a thing. So he's using the high ground, though, to micro pretty successfully here. I would say that he will be able to push this push back. The only problem is that, uh, you know, he lost the base. So a, a little bit yeah. of a Pyrrhic victory. Looks like he is taking a base in the bottom leftish area. What's, what's that, the 7 o'clock rapid? Uh, you know, you could say any number there, and I'd believe you. Okay, he got the 7 o'clock. The only problem is I think that's a... Oh, it's a mine. I thought it was a vulture that was denying the base, but it's still a fledgling base. <laughs> it's a mine there. Just it's barely misplaced. Unfortunate. <laughs> I mean, hey, if he runs a unit into the He's middle He's retaking line, the base. Nice. Got to start dominance. I mean, anytime you're able to push the Terran back, it's always worth, like, re-expanding there just to force them to have to push it again. Because yeah. also it means if you're pushing that base, then you can't push a different base. So that's well... I mean, he's kind of staying pretty idle, I think, Stork in general. Like, he has a lot of... Oh, wait, no, the carriers are attacking now. Okay, never mind. Yeah, you can't really be too idle with carriers, otherwise the Goliath count just gets a little insane. The well, turret count is actually pretty low. He has not rebuilt a ton of turrets here, so... Carriers are going to get yeah, in. Yeah, he's in there. This is going to be really obnoxious. I mean, I don't even see the Goliaths are turning around yet. Carrier's going to carry. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, it looks like the, a mine might actually just go for a big push here. Carriers are turning around. Honestly, killing the base is not the worst idea here. Uh, yeah. Call me crazy, but that's a pretty good spot for the carriers to be in. Nice. Yeah, this is pretty scary, though. I don't, I don't think mine can actually do anything with this big push, especially with Storm out now. That is a lot of carriers. I think that is eight carriers, if I'm not mistaken. He might lose one here, but that's not a big deal. Okay, he went up to seven. Now he's down to six. That's not what you want to have happen. If you can get up to, like, eight, ten carriers, it's maybe too many, but also enough to deal insanity damage. Yeah, these carriers are going to be really annoying attacking the main base while he has Storm on the defense as well. Like, it's going to be really hard I here for... You just put the carriers here and be annoying. Force Mind to try to pull back. Mind is just going for it, Yeah, though. he's probably Mind just going to go care. for it. Yeah, m like, Mind had his opportunity to pull back, and he hasn't yeah. yet. Well, the problem is that, like, this Terran push, if you can stop there from ever being reinforcements by taking out some of these factories, I mean, eventually... Look at these that's yeah, you can kill those off. That's it. That's also fine. Okay, here it comes. These are going to be big storms. This is really important. Storm move. Oh, nice pickoff on the... Templar. Yeah, That's he really sniped nice. the high Templar. Now there are no storms. Although this all the Goliaths are tanking for the siege tanks right now. If these Goliaths go down, he's going to have nothing to do with the carriers. The carriers are reigning supreme the now. That's zealots, not enough. Uh, the, these uh, uh, Goliaths are actually having to choose between targeting the Zealots that are getting on top of the tanks and the carriers wow, actually... That has to be it. Yeah, the carriers are actually doing so much damage. Yeah, he, All the carriers are going to get out of this. Maybe one goes down, but that's totally fine. This trade was really good for him. Yeah, he One does. carrier goes down, but he's going to get all of the tanks. Yeah, and I believe he's remaking two carriers at this point anyway. At least he should be. But killing off that army is gigantic. Stork takes a huge supply lead, and even if mine remakes Goliath, he won't be able to simultaneously remake tanks at the same time. Yeah. Which is what simultaneous means. Also, these carriers can just go yeah. back into the main again. That's right, yeah, so he's remaking a couple of carriers, keeping that six to eight count somewhere in between there, and there's not enough turrets here to defend. Did I hear a scout attack? No. What is, oh, it's, uh... I think you just heard the, the sound of the interceptors attacking. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I've always got my ears listening for that, uh, in case he wants to meme on him. But no, these carriers are getting a lot of damage done. The inability to rebuild those Stork turrets in the back of the base. needs to take a nexus, like, right now in, in mine space, because it's, it's only appropriate. <laughs> what? Okay. I don't think he's quite at that level. I mean... I think he is. No, mine is definitely not out of this game just yet. He's not in a good spot, but he's, he's still alive. Pretty out of the game, but not fully out of the game. You know, I think that's a, a good way to. Like if he was on a staircase it. and top is Ooh. out of the game and the bottom is winning the game, he's like plus one, at the top. Plus one shields just finished for uh, uh, Stork, and that's super good. Really helps protect the carriers, interceptors to be a lot. Helps protect the Protoss, you could say. You could say, in fact. Yeah. Indeed, you could. I mean, you technically could say anything, but uh, you know, there's problems with that. <laughs> anyway. Uh, the bases are still looking pretty Look good for Stork. Bottom right base too. Is he gonna recall those probes? Why is there 50 probes idle at that base? I think it's actually just. I idle think maybe probes. even Stork forgot that base was there. It's uh, possible. 
Well, I, I really just don't see how you deal with these carriers. No. Like, they're just going to reign supreme in your main base forever. I like, mean, if so you ever have to pull all your Goliaths back into your main base, you're not happy. So one way you deal with this is with a Cloaked Wraith transition. It's a really sick way to deal with a Protoss that has like 10 carriers, something really committed. Uh -huh. uh, the only problem is that those don't deal a lot versus really anything else. So you really got to make it count. And he's not doing it, so. Also, you need a really good economy to go Cloak Wraith transition. <laughs> you are correct. And for all intents and purposes, mine is broke. He's mining off of like 1.5 1. bases. 1.5 bases. Yeah, I would give you that rapidly. Maybe it's two. Let's call it two, because he still has the mineral all. You know what? I'll give you 1.7. OK. All right, I'll take Close what I can enough. get here. Hey, either way, 3-2 Siege tanks are good. They so are good, well, but. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. You know what else is good? What? Storm. Uh, I'll give you that one. And okay. uh, Cloak Carriers. So he's going to be fully maxed out against this 130 supply tier, and I think this is quite scary. So what you're saying is they're basically even. Sh sure. <laughs> Are you balance winding for the other race now? <laughs> Are you balance winding for Protoss? I, I, I am an equal opportunity. Never let it said that I am not an unbiased caster. Nice. Because I am equally biased towards both races. Oh, did you snipe a carrier there? I nice. think he did. All right, well, this is just an overwhelming army. Oh, yeah. This I think the ground army could actually win this fight without the uh, carriers, but with the carriers, this is going to be a very one sided Especially fight. with Storm, but yeah, these carriers yeah, are not even monstrous. Storming. Jeez. Zealots, too. Yeah, there's nothing here, really. Oh, what a, what a god gamer Stork is, man. I don't know if we can throw away all of our zealots now. If the Protoss is unified, by the Kala, the sacred union of every thought and emotion. When all those zealots run in and die, does that mean every Protoss unit feels pain? Uh, no. I'm going to go with no. Maybe that's not how the Kala works. I don't know. Well, hey, Stork is crushing <laughs> this game. If that's how the Kala works, should every Protoss unit that dies just kill all of the Protoss units? Well, it is masochistic. You are sports. correct there. Uh, maybe. I think Protoss would be underpowered then. Probably that's not how it works. Man, Stork played the game of his life this time. He is uh, absolutely crushing it. Mind is just kind of shaking his heads right now because we're going to go to a game five after this, no regret. I kind of feel like this game was a lot closer than it should have been. <laughs> like, he basically got that base for free the entire game. He went into carriers without any pressure whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, and then the game kind of was, I mean, it wasn't really close, but it almost went close. That's an excellent analysis there. It, it just felt weird. It should have been really one close. I think. Well, Song Byung Gu ties the series up at two to two, and that will take us to an ace match, which is going to be super exciting because all it takes is one more of these games where he pulls off the craziest stuff we've ever seen. And he can do it. <laughs> I mean, it's working for him. I that, feel like that if you base have to pick was pretty, pretty out there. It if you have really to well. pick something to have going for you, that is not the worst thing you could pick. You mean hidden base? Hidden base, wacky stuff. You no, name yeah, it. I agree. I think. Uh, I think that's the best way to play. If you're, if you're I love that expression on mine's face. He's like, what more do I need to do? <laughs> what crazier base could he take than that one? What, my natural? He's going to put his engineering bay just slightly to the left now. <laughs> that's the build order optimization, just a little bit to the left. Yeah. I feel like it's quite an unfortunate game for mine, because I, I think mine played the game well. Oh, he definitely did. If that base hadn't been there, if it had been standard, he would have been killing it. But we got one final game to decide which player will be the first player eliminated from the KSL. So don't go anywhere. We will find out whether or not we're losing Stork or Mind when we get back. Welcome back to KSL. It's a brand new season, and we're kicking it off by giving you your money's worth. 14 out of 15 possible games played today. You know what this isn't? What? A brand new series. Oh, that's true. It says it's the same series, and you can see how excited Mind is to play <laughs> more TVP. Yeah, I mean, I just got to feel pretty bad. <laughs> Look, that was a really crazy hidden base. The engineering bay from Mind only inches away from scouting that uh, hidden third, which was you know, yeah. sometimes, what is it? Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. <laughs> That's Stork's philosophy. I guess that works in StarCraft as well. It sure does. Yeah. Um, so Stork with the big brain play makes it into an ace match. And what a game it's going to be. What a series, Man, honestly. I love that our final map is Circuit Breakers. It's just a big, big map. Yeah. 
I think that should favor Mind, but at the same time, who knows? <laughs> well, it's also pretty good if you can keep your Terran opponent like kind of back a little bit. You can yeah. mass, mass, mass expand. Put down 80 next side. I guess spawn locations are quite important too. Uh, yeah, that's actually true as well. If you spawn cross spawns, then that makes some expos kind of hard to get. Let's get into it. Into it we are. In the bottom right hand corner of the map in the blue as Protoss is Stork. And in the upper left in the red mm. is Mind. Cross spawns. Cross spawns rapid. On the biggest map in our map pool. Mm. We might not go home today. Uh, yeah. You know what? We have to cast tomorrow. Let's just stay here. You know, that's definitely the big brain play. We could put some of the chairs in the audience together and just sleep here overnight. Play StarCraft like a LAN party. Mm. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? You have the best ideas, no regret. What? Chilling out here mm -hmm. all night long, mm -hmm. 24 hours of StarCraft, the dream. You think that's the best idea? I mean, look, we're going to get pretty close to 20 out of 20 games of StarCraft today. So, you know, never let it said I don't like casting StarCraft because we're going to get into it. So uh, this is our last game in this best of five. However much is our it though? <laughs> is it though? Somehow we're going to find more ways to cram games into this series. So one of our players is going home, and the other player gets to advance on to uh, next week's or two weeks from now when they play for their lives in the uh, final match of this group. Yeah, I think it's really sad for either player to go home. I mean, it's going to oh, yeah. suck because they're playing their hearts out right now. Well, you know, last season, my or, uh, Stork got out of the group of death. It had last Jadong and uh, uh, Rain in it. And Rain and Stork made it out of that group. Uh, really, really sick uh, game. So let's just say don't underestimate Stork, but it's pretty clear that he needs some sort of edge to find a win in this game. I Whether thought last game he played, well, I mean, he did play that weird strat, but he was pretty solid. Uh, the only thing was that it was closer than it should have been, I think. Uh, yeah. Which kind of telegraphs that Mind potentially is a stronger player. Well, s yeah, well, Mind is so good at playing this passive, upgrade-based, standard mech style that Stork knows he has to exploit that in some way. I mean, it's not rocket scientist, right? If right. you can find a standard way that your opponent's playing, just, you know, do the counter to that. And in many ways, that is either mass expanding or going for some weird tech or... Or both. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, or, or both. <laughs> That's what he did last game. He went for tech and mass expanded. Well, he also got that stupid hidden base, which is still kind of triggering me. <laughs> but the idea is Stork's got to have some some secret sauce, some some NJ's special stuff. Uh-huh. Do you know what I mean? No, I don't, but I'll, I'll go with the... Uh -huh. Wait, have you never watched Space Jam? Oh. Oh, sure. That's how they beat the Monstars. Okay. MJ's th special stuff. Nice. <laughs> well, I mean, it doesn't work unless you say it that way. Right. Duh. Duh. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't know if I'd characterize Mind as a Monstar. That you know, needs sometimes I feel like the adult in this cast. <laughs> well, that's how you know everything's turned upside down. I'm just young at heart, okay? Mm -hmm. So, pretty standard stuff, right? Yes. Glad we had this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about the Monstars more? I, I mean, I could do that. If, if that were ever required of me, I would have trained my whole life for that one moment. But as far as the game's concerned, in case you're just like, why don't these guys talk about what's happening? I'm like, well, nothing's happening. So, you yeah, know. Yeah, nothing's happening That'd yet. be a really boring conversation. Instead, well, there's we two Marines here. Whoa! Killing and there's it. a barracks floating. Uh, wait, so you're saying he's not trying to build mass Marines? <gasps> I bet this barracks is to block the stalkers from, or the dragoons from running by. <gasps> I said it. <laughs> Don't take my brood war card away from me. One build order victory at a time here. Oh, let's see if he blocks the ramp. Oh, is he trying to take out the SCV? Probu! Got, Got it. it. Didn't even need the dragoon. That was just emotional support. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, little probe. You can do it. You can do it. It's good dragoon so. parenting. Machine chop. I mean, everything is very standard. Yes. I don't think we'll see much deviation. It's funny because this is the absolute opposite of the first series for Mind. Uh, Mind playing extremely standard every single game in this series, playing like completely insane in the first series with a proxy factor. Oh, yeah. That proxy factor was really sick. Yeah. So, 
If I were Stork, uh, I would say fast carriers probably not going to do it for you because not on this map. Ch chances are a it's big and b you'll get scanned. So let's cross that one off the build order list. I think there's a lot less abusable territory in this map compared to the last as well. Especially if you take that hidden pace. I mean, uh, yeah, for sure. If mine goes for another one of these cutesy two to three tank push uh, pushes with either plus one or no upgrades. Uh, that's sort of to scare the Protoss into not mass expanding off of mine being too passive. But I will say that if mine, er, if, if Stork is willing to hide a base right next to the Terran's natural, then there is nothing <laughs> he is not willing to do. I don't think he can do it on this map, though. Uh, Cross yeah. positions. <laughs> I mean, the uh, idea is he has way more bases to hide bases at. That's what true. are you going to do? Scout 12 bases, no regret? That's true. Well, see, how many bases do you have to scout? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, yeah, just about 12 bases you would have to scout to figure out where really he's hiding. You could have scouted half of the bases and then scouted, or just doubled that. You would have been able to count the, the bases quicker. Shh. That would have been sick. Look, I've only got so many fingers to count on. You want me to take my <laughs> shoes off? Sure, Some, somehow sure. I got to count to these high numbers. Observatory wall. Uh, <laughs> a, a safe build. Pretty interesting wall. Gasp. Um, it would be really suck if you were two facted because you would just lose your observatory. Well, I think it would just suck to get two facted in general. That's also, true. I mean, it's cross spawn, so he's probably safe against that. That's true as well, Rapid. You're just I'm killing it, man. Truths right now. I'm I'm just saying what the people want to hear. I'm just saying what we're all thinking. No regret. Thinking about the truths. Uh, that's right. Yes. So. <sighs> I'm glad I'm pacing myself for this broadcast. I've <laughs> I mean, this I've has actually been a really I've long I've saved broadcast. at least 50% of my memes for the last series. So. It's been six hours, and we have one more full series after this, which is probably going to be nice. five games. So, you well, know. We're good for another couple more hours. <laughs> I don't know about that. Well, it's a good thing that right before the broadcast, we covered everybody's chairs in super glue. So now they're just forced to sit here and watch us, right? That would be so uncomfortable. I mean, yeah, but, like, you know, worth it, right? I Anything guess. for Brood War. Anything for Brood War? <laughs> There's no lengths we're not willing to go to to get you to watch our show. All right, so this is one way to stop early extra bases from coming out. Vultures! They're my, our mines out, but uh, good job taking Did it stop that base from being taken, though, Rapid? No. no. But he saw I was there and not somewhere else, which is already better than last game. I mean, here's another thing. It's basically impossible for the Terran player to really go across the map and deal with this base, you know? There's, like, basically nothing he can do besides be greedy himself, I guess, in response to this. Like, you I, don't scout that, and you're like, you know what? No, you don't. <laughs> like, honestly, I don't think mine is going to be greedy. Has he started a third command center? Uh, I don't think so. Is that Try for the third? Yeah, that's for the third. What were you saying, Rapid? Couldn't hey, I said I don't think so couldn't, when it hadn't been started. Couldn't okay. Couldn't over that third okay. command center being built, Rapid. <sighs> it wasn't built when I said it. God. Anyway, the third <laughs> is coming up, and you're right. That is exactly what he's doing. He's trying to out-greed the greeter. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you scout a third base. Mm -hmm usually means you can take a third base. Well, also, you're pretty sure your opponent is not going to do anything early. And I think this is exactly correct for mine. He is playing just as greedy as he needs to. Right. Yeah. I, I think he's totally willing to play like a normal game, a normal TVP. Uh, I think mine is the one who's... <laughs> or Sharp. Shark? Stark? Stork? Stork. Sorry. There we Six go. Six hours, man. Yeah. My words are uh, breaking. <laughs> We're just going to call both players Mork and get it half right each time. That's true. You could do that. Mork. Well, or or Stein. Stein, Stein? That, oh, these are bad names. Anyway. Stein. Well, for now, oh, is that a Stargate? No regret? That is a Stargate and a Temple Archives. Whoa. We're going to... What, what are we going to do with this? <laughs> I mean, it's probably going to be Arbiters. I, I would imagine. Sure. <laughs> Unless he's actually doing my build where I was thinking in carriers or oh whatever. Oh, God, get me out of here. Please I don't think no. you'll ever do that, especially on this map. I think this map is way better for well, Arbiters. Well, hey, if you hit with some Ooh. sort of high-tech play, oh, Vulture run by is going to get quite a few probes. Really annoying. Yeah. But at least the army was there to clear it up. Um, but one way that you can punish a Terran player for getting up all these bases means that he has more places to defend, which means more missile turrets, which means more spread out tanks, which means if you hit somewhere really hard uh -huh. with some sort of high tech play, Reaver Drop, Arbiter, Carriers, whatever, yes. then that's a great way to exploit it. That is a great way to exploit it. We'll have to see. I mean, I think that's his plan. Uh, Arbiters are going to be a really big play, though, this game. It's really on uh, Stork to actually do something, you know? Uh, yeah. You can I just mean, let the Terran player take all these bases. He's literally taking the fourth, his fourth base. Look at how spread out he is. 
Well, I mean, your cross spawn to the pick map in the map pool. Probably just go for it. Honestly, I thought it was Stork that was going to kind of play this style. But right now, they're well, racing. Stork is as well. Yeah, I, I mean, they're favorite. That always favors mine, though. If, oh, for sure. If, you, if you're even on bases like this. If Stork could be on four bases for the entire game, but be guaranteed to get those four bases, I think he would almost just take that. Because as a Terran, if you can hold four bases, like, you just have. Give him money. That's right. These, the, he ba it basically turns into, like, an Elon Musk gigafactory. You're just making everything all the time, 24 hours a day. Yeah. I mean, he can he can basically max out and then just take the infinite bases, so. Well, mine seems to have as his win condition, getting 3-2 upgrades on a giant amount of mech, which is, you know, not bad. It's not like that's a, you know, not like the golden armada of Terran. Yeah. But Stork has found ways to kind of deal with that. And especially since once mine reaches like that 170, 180 supply, Sometimes he gets more concerned with moving and using that supply than he does about macroing, and that can kind of fall off after a while. Right. I think he, he's focusing on macroing this game, though. It feels like he's extremely macro-oriented. Uh, I'd love to just see a million factories if he could, but uh, it turns out you have resources in this game. Well, right now both players are playing. How fast can I get... This is actually a no-rush 20. My infrastructure up. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. Uh, yeah, you actually might be right about that. I'd say maybe 15 to 20 minutes is when anything will happen in the game. Yeah, um, Arbiters are going to be the uh, first time you can actually do anything for Stork. I will say, if I were Stork, I would have like two more Nexi down. Uh, two more? I mean, look, you can take clumps of three Nexi kind of for free. Do you even have the probes to saturate two more Nexi? No, on top of what I, I think you probably wouldn't want the probes to saturate two more Nexi. Also, you definitely don't have two, enough probes now. Yeah, look this how is simple it is. You just run the bolsters well. in. The vultures go in, the vultures kill the probes. You can't explain Now that. there's four probes at that base, but good nice. thing we have, what, five next eye? Well, I mean, in theory, you can rebuild the probes, but also that still costs money. Ooh. Getting a little bit ahead of the observer there, Stork. All right, it's time. The Arbiter is out. <laughs> and it's ready to, to go. Ready I to mean, rumble. I mean, there are some juicy bases out there, for sure. I mean, the, if he could somehow get into the main base. Well, the, I mean, the, kind of the downside is that all of mine's army is at home, so he will be able to respond. Yeah, I mean, mine's not going to move out until he's maxed in 3-2. Oh, <laughs> uh, like yeah. It's, it's not going to happen. He doesn't need more bases than this. So he's gotten the four bases, and now he's just adding on insurance policies. Yeah. He's saying, look, I need turrets, I need tank lines. I need mines. Yeah. What exactly. else do we need? Rapid. Mines, We need EMPs. Mines. What? You don't need EMPs? Oh, EMPs, yeah. What do you think I said? I don't know, man. I <laughs> thought you were just spitting some hot fire. I wasn't ready to pick up. For a second, I was like, wait, down. do we not have EMP in this match? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> no, you're not allowed to get it. It's too powerful. Uh, yeah, uh, obviously, just teching up, re-solidifying uh, re his position on those four bases is exactly what mine is doing right now. And for Stork, honestly, like, I mean, you can't expand to too many bases, right? <laughs> He's yeah. already on five, so that should give him the ability to kind of do exactly the same thing, but... I mean, Terran is better, you know, head to head. So let's see. I mean, Stork, yeah, Stork can only take so many bases. J just to clarify, I know we're memeing a little bit, but every time I say that Terran units are better, I mean that uh, because of the way siege tanks works, uh, siege tanks work. If you have a very highly upgraded siege tank, they trade very effectively with just ground units that have to run at them, which is in general what Protoss ground units have to do. So a lot of times yeah. it comes up to the Protoss player to try to circumvent that with things like Arbiters and Recall or Stasises um, or Carriers, you know, something like that. They so should th add Immortals to this game. Immortals would break this matchup so hard. All of a sudden you just push any tank line and win. That would be sick. You could just drop Immortals on top. Nice. Or you could Recall them. Uh, I'm going to vote no to both of those. Um, maybe, I... maybe one day. Oh, oh, that's sick. Okay. So... What he did there is used an ability called Hallucination. It's not one that you see every game, but it does exactly that. It What's creates scarier than five Arbiters? I mean, the downside is that he's going to know that half of them are fake. Do you and, think so? Oh, they're dodging oh. the mines. No way. Okay, well, that's nice. So you want to position the Arbiters so it's not clear which one of them oh, is Oh, but there's fake. turrets forever. Uh, yeah, but they tank the turret shots, sure. ideally. So here we go. All right, I'm waiting for it. Get your G's oh, ready, no. guys. G, 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 G. It's not that bad, is it? I Wait. mean, it's actually going right oh, in. No. Oh, no. Oh, oh, recall, recall, recall. Oh, he no, he oh, did get he it with the EMP. EMP. I thought he missed for a second. All right, now we just need to let this Arbiter live for long enough to... Uh, oh, I mean, he's going to kill the SCV with his five damage auto attack. Eventually. 
Damn. I told you EMP was broken. Completely countered that hallucination strat. You questioned me when I sent EMP. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, that it, army that was, was a good strategy. If it wasn't for the MP, this game actually might have just ended. That army was just Haluk. I uh, mean, if we give that Arbiter enough time, I guess he will recall eventually. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess if you never deal with it. But I, at this oh, point... Oh, we're maxed, though. Oh, my God, we're maxed out at, like, 14 minutes. I guess that's not rocket science, but it's still very, very scary. And this is definitely a Protoss army that is not qualified to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with mine. Whoa! Oh, it is if half the army's How gone, though. How good is Stasis? So good, the answer. Um, and now this is our actually, Although, look at okay. how many tanks are up there. Well, Does no he regret. know that there's like 20,000 tanks up there? Uh, uh, he knows now. Look at him running. I wish I knew then what I know now. Uh, and that is that that tank line is What did he insane. kill? Did he, kill a couple, he killed a couple of vultures. Yeah, a couple, a couple of volty bolts, you know, took him out. Uh, but the, the end result is that mine's army is gigantic. You it is. cannot fight it really that. Is. So you yeah, have even look at the income. <laughs> Mine's just okay. First of all, literally every way. That's a lot of gateways. He also built maybe eight or nine gates up in the upper right-hand corner, so he'll be able to rebuild units from multiple different directions and flank from those directions, which is good. The only problem is he also has to not die or not lose any of his bases. Yeah, in the it looks like Mind actually might be trying to secure more bases and just put them out, which is funny because he's been maxed. He might just be waiting for the upgrades. Like his bank is insane. He can actually replenish oh, yeah. so much. Of his army already. Well, I mean, like you said, this is basically a No Rush 20 game. Yeah. So well, we're not at 20 yet, but that is a lot of vultures. I mean, let's think about the <laughs> dream teams, right? If you had to get a the best oh maxed out. Oh, my God. My God in Himmel. He's not getting it. That would have been, <laughs> been amazing. I thought he was going to storm them, but I think he's actually going to kill the, the Templar, the cannons, and the base eventually with just mass vultures. So. Yeah. Have I, fun. I mean, <laughs> the vultures are wrecking damage. Actually, this is really bad. This is really important for him. But the thing is, he can just rebuild these pylons. He's going to deal with it eventually. Uh, yeah, but in the meantime, mine will take a position in the middle of the map, which will allow him to secure a fifth base. Yeah, which is not something we see often. Five base to Aaron player without really any hesitation or any problems. Uh, is he going to uh, get, get the Nexus? Yeah, he will actually get the Nexus here if he target fires. I mean, oh vultures are not your Nexus killers, but they are this time. You got it. That's so annoying. Yeah, well... Uh, killing <laughs> nice. Nexuses with Vultures. That's what we're doing in this game, No Regret. Yeah. I thought there was a No Rush 20 agreement. <gasps> well, maybe it was No Rush 15. Well, we hey, look at that. A... The idea is you rush when you get 3-2, and that's where mine's at right now. So, oh, my goodness. This is such an inevitable push by mine. Triple Forge. <laughs> well, hey, sometimes you just got to get those shields. I mean, is any either player incentivized to attack right now? Well, I mean, I guess the answer is mine. He's got 3-2. Well, is it, though? He's got five bases. Does he need more? I don't think either player minds playing passively. The only problem That's what I mean. is it's kind of weird. I think Stork has to, to be the offender. Well, you just kind of want to dent your opponent right now. So things like killing that Nexus. Does it end the game? No. Is it annoying? Yes. And so you make these little tiny, uh, you know, cracks in their armor, and then you exploit them in a big way. Like you make way for a recall, or it gives you time to get up to 55 carriers. You know, 55 carriers. A number. The funny thing is, I don't think either player is really... Oh, okay, that's a big recall. And it's pretty uncontested. He might actually get a nice base here, a nice juicy base. Uh, are there any tanks there? I guess nope. not, actually. Wow. That base oh, is this going to trigger a big attack from I, mine, though. That's the thing about recall. Your army got to be somewhere. Here is the answer. But oh, what? Nice thinking about off. it. Yeah, he does get the science vessel and gets out and gets this base. Well, he actually hasn't killed the base yet. What? Yeah, he's not going to get the base, but he's being really annoying. If there's a... Arbiter here, this could be really scary because there's no EMPs anymore. But there isn't an Arbiter. Or if we had Storm. Well, he actually killed the tanks off there. Oh my goodness. Holy moly. How was there zero to defend there? Did he just pick the best base or the best base? I think he picked the best base. Whoa! I, okay, answer. there's an Arbiter here. I guess he doesn't really want to fight head on. If he had like a, a better army composition to deal with this, it would be really scary. But he doesn't really have what he needs. Uh, no, he does tanks. not. Also, I love the Zealot follow up. This is just like the screw you. Because, like, all the Zealots will die eventually, but it's just annoying. And he can do whatever he wants. Yeah, this base is dead. Hey, any base you can kill, I can kill better. So here we go. The push is here that, at the 3 o'clock. super mega dead base. Uh, yeah, no saving that. But I dare say uh, that the Zealots are actually damage? getting more damage done than just killing off that base. 
Uh, yeah, sure. So it's a base trait, technically, yes, but... It's the weirdest high-income base trait I've ever seen. <laughs> it's like they both have more money than they know what to do with, but... It's and they're still doing economic damage, but it's like, well, I've got 4K, No, but hundred. actually, this is really cool, because there's no tanks back at home, and tanks are the real way that you stop these Dragoons. Yeah, he's going... I mean, he's going to deal damage. Wait, I just don't know how he, he really deals with the main zero army. tanks? I mean, he's been maxed for so long. I think that's the real well, problem. Well, also, you just have a tank in your base. Wow, this is a remarkable oversight by mine that Stork is exploiting to the fullest, which is about the best way that I can characterize Stork running into a base, recalling, and getting a good ah, you know, job done with Arbiter. that. <laughs> well, the Arbiter dies, but that is definitely not uh, you know, mission exploiting. unaccomplished. Well, he, he, got, he got the job done. Sure, he did. He did what all good Southern American plumbers do, and that is get her done. Rapid. I gotta represent my. Uh, I, I'm just rapid from the block. I'm remembering my roots right there. The block. That's right. That's where I'm from. You're from the block. Yeah. Which block? A block. Nice. I mean, a lot of people are from the block, or A block rather. Yeah, but a lot of people forget where they came from. You hear? I hear. What I'm trying to say. Jeez. All right. right. All right. So, I mean, this game's gonna start to stabilize, and they both lost a base, but. I mean, that base was not mined out, but it got some value. I would say that that's probably better for Stork because it did kind of pull mine back a little bit. The only problem there is that this base is he's way more valuable bases. because you're right, it represents two bases here. Yeah, he might be able to, he's actually trying to make this work again. So he knows it worked the first time. Ooh, big EMP. I think that disabled all the Templar there. Uh, he might Maybe still have one, one has but one. you're yeah. right. That was a big bonus round. Uh, the problem is there's no counterplay to that push it did the job it killed off the bases and now stork like where does he like he's got a big bank but it's not gonna last forever yeah i kind of wish he would just fight head on and trade because it feels like right now he's just trading inefficiently without an army look at that emp nice big emp there so he's gonna pick off the science vessels but the tanks are what's scary the zealot count is not actually as high as i think stork wishes it were i think he just needs better like uh he needs an arbiter to really deal with this oh he does have one Okay, okay, here yeah, we go. Oh, oh, big stasis. Oh, look at that. Oh, give it to me. Nice. Only four. Yeah. I expected better. Uh, oh. But no, yeah. yeah, it's exactly what you need. Just keep the Terran sieged up away from the rest of your bases. But man, Stork really needs to find a way to get uh, a little bit more. I honestly see this game going on for another, like, 10 minutes, <laughs> 15 minutes. Okay, here comes a big fight. It also could just end right now. Do we have another stasis? Uh, I don't think so, but he is going to be able to bomb on the tanks in the back, I think. I think that's empty. <laughs> uh, okay, never mind, that's empty. Uh, he does get Although, zealots back there. Yeah, this is a pretty big trade. So the siege tank line was spread out, but maybe a little bit too spread out. Uh, so uh, actually, the lower part of it does kind of die. Actually, the it went a lot deeper than I expected, and maybe even more than Stork expected. So Yeah, Stork uh, didn't really utilize the fight that well. I mean, he had a shuttle empty. That could have done a lot of damage. Uh, I mean, two Stork's credit. He only credit. had one single uh, stasis. I mean, he didn't really utilize mm -hmm. any of his tools that he had. So if you watch where the blue box is on your screen, you're going to be seeing it sit over these massive gateway farms. These are like the uh, the pod farms in the Matrix. Uh, every one of them is just going to be producing so much energy for, uh, for Stork. He's going to be able to remacro like a god with this huge bank, but he's got maybe one or two more remaxes left before Mind kind of puts him down here. Can he even get a remax here, though? It's also, like, kind of on his throat right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the pressure is on for sure. Uh, ooh, that feels bad. But uh, Oh, he's trying to do it again. I really don't like trying to abuse the spot over and over again. Well, it turns out this time there's tanks there. A lot of tanks there. <laughs> yeah, remarkable, huh? Yeah, that did not do much. I feel like um, Stork is slowly throwing, not throwing away this game, because it felt like Mind always was in a great spot. Exactly. But it, it does feel like he's throwing away any possibility of winning this game, because now there's no bank. Uh. His tech is quite uh, limited. I mean, he's got Arbiters, but they're not really doing anything. Uh, Terran player is, like, situated in between all of his bases, so it's really hard to actually do anything with this. Yeah. Uh, I think Mind is in a position where he will but slowly win this game. Oh, and EMP, 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 recall! Oh, okay, it's a stasis. <laughs> well, now your vault, vultures are stuck inside, I guess, your base. I think he... Is that uh, even blocking it? Kind of. Kind of. I Just mean, that's kind of annoying, so. I guess. I mean, I think he ran in there for the recall, realized it was way too defended to recall, and just went for the stasis to get yeah, something done. Might as well do something before your uh, Arbiter just dies. Yeah. 
Uh, so it's clear that Stork is looking for ways to kind of get back into this. He's remaxed, so credit where credit's due. The only oh, problem is... Oh, stasis? Oh, I got EMP'd. Oh, my. Yeah, Okay, all right. he's not getting anything. I mean, he can't even take a surround here because he's on a ramp. This yes. I mean, at this point, you're dealing with the repercussions of a No Rush 20 game against Terra. He Terran. keeps pushing the same spot, too. It's just not going to happen. Look at him. He's pushing down a ramp. Defensive Matrix not going to if happen. If he can get a big storm on those science vessels, I mean, like, we're just looking for value anywhere. Yeah. I feel like the Terran. <laughs> I mean, to Stork's credit, he's still mining off of, like, three, four bases. Uh, here we go. So it's a storm push, which is the desperation way to break a Terran base. Uh, he's going to break it, but at what cost? He can't really replenish Oh, is he, though? Yeah, not really. Is he, though? He's, he can't really replenish these armies. How good is the defensive matrix? It's too good. No regret. It. It's too good. Oh, my goodness. Look at these mines, too. It's, I the mean, question is, is the defensive matrix onto or not? Onto? Yeah. That's, a, that's an advanced algebra question for you kids in the chat that went to school. Um, I don't know if uh, Stork can keep trying this over and over again, because if you look at the banks, Stork is broke as a joke. No gas income at all. I mean, Stork doesn't have anything. <laughs> he doesn't have anything going for him right now. Oh, man, these vultures are just going to kind of put the nail in the coffin. Yeah, he doesn't have an economy. He doesn't have an army. He's really literally happen. not mining gas at all. I mean, zealots are good, but they're not going to get the job done here. So zealots are not that good, though. You know, I they're, mean, they're pretty good. No regret. They're good, but not that good. Rapid. It's 25 minutes in. You're down in supply against a 3-3 Terran, I assume. No, you are correct. Uh, I think uh, what we are seeing here is the swan song of the dinosaur toss. <laughs> this is one tank. This is that look Mission on little. Mission accomplished. Here we go. All right, they're going for it. Get ready. This is like right before the asteroid hits Littlefoot. Uh, yeah, is what we're pushing watching. Across bridges. I mean, I don't even think this is the entire army. I mean, look, like I said, zealots are good. Okay. Uh, yeah, but I don't even know if that was the entire army. I, I mean, that is, for all intents and purposes, the entire army. And he didn't clean it, but still. Oh, you mean the entire mined army? Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> he's on 152 supply right that now. That one tank is really sad that it's stasis, or really happy because it didn't die. I think he's happy. Okay, maybe not anymore. Oh, is he gonna get this base too? Oh, so Stork is trying to answer the age-old question. And now he can just kite how many zealots. zealots to the center of a, ta uh, a Terran pop? Uh, and the answer is maybe a few more. Uh, can he kill the, the X? Unstasis. Boom goes Ooh, the dynamite. Oh, that's a big EMP. <laughs> uh, well. I mean, considering he has an economic advantage, a larger army. You know, eventually mine will mine out these five bases. Yeah, but bases. then he can just lift these off and take the bottom <laughs> left five bases. Um, I feel like mine could just push him right now and win. So Stork has no money. Um, he has started to mine gas, but he's mining it like three probes at a time. He's got one mining base, I think. Or maybe two. Yeah, he has two mining bases. I'll give him that. I mean, all I'm trying to say is like. Mind is kind of mining out. I guess you're right. I don't know if the dinosaur's toss is going to find the hidden valley. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, I don't think he, the dinosaur toss will. Uh, no. Oof. Yeah, th this army just feels like scraps, especially with yeah. EMP and everything. Is he going to try and go over the top again? It worked once, why not a third time? Oh, no. These, this base is so critical. I, I, this is just lather, rinse, repeat here. Uh, or siege, unsiege, repeat, I guess, uh, for mine. He's shutting down this base, like, what, three, four times this game? I think this is, like, time number three. Yeah. I mean, he can't get down there to defend it. This, this base is so critical, too. Yeah. To Distance mount any mine. really counter to this army, he needs economy, and he doesn't have it. He's got two bases. What's left to do here for mine? Like, is he playing like bingo with build all the Terran units? I, Where no, are the battle cruisers? I think, yeah, I think mine is just playing uh, unnecessarily safe. Nice <laughs> team matrix on this. I mean, how special. safe is too safe? No regret, right? Well, there is such thing as too safe, but at the same time, you, he did just kill the base. In the I, left, I mean, if there is, left. this ain't it. Um, it's not he, even sieging. <laughs> oh god! Oh, I mean, that's a nice storm, that's right? A nice storm. But it's uh, only one storm. 
I love how he sieged the tanks that were next to the zealots, but didn't siege the tanks behind the zealots. <laughs> well, I mean, it's that it's that zealot defense, you know? Yeah, I think he doesn't care anymore. I think he's ready to go across the map. I think if it wasn't cross position, Stork would already be dead. Yeah. I mean, this is Stork sort of contemplating his final moments in the KSL. I can't believe we're already eliminating a player from KSL, and it's Stork. Yep. This is a guy who got out of the group of death last season. The first so player eliminated in the round of 16. How the mighty have fallen, for sure. Um, for mine, oh I think it's... Oh, my God, the tanks never end. Ugh, slow and steady winning the race here. Yeah. I think this was basically the exact game Mind always wanted to play. Yes, I agree 100%. I think this was perfect for Mind. Mm -hmm. I don't think Mind could have asked for better. He got cross positions and he got four bases free. Will BlizzCon start before this game finishes? It's possible. Wait, what happens? We stream on the same channel, don't we? <laughs> All I'm trying to say is eventually, <laughs> oh. if we get 20 games in a day and that day is tomorrow, we're gonna have to fight, okay? But I think we're here first, so they have to delay all of BlizzCon. Well, also, StarCraft 1 came before StarCraft That's 2, right? That's true. We're the eldest. We have, yeah, we have uh, some squatter's rights or whatever it is. I don't know. Here we go. Mind is going to try to bust in. One last time. One last time. For good old sakes. I don't see it. Do you see it rapid? All right, get your Gs ready. Here we go. This we got three Dragoons in a dream. Two dra one, one Dragoon. One Dragoon. Oh, he's building zealots. I'm not sure. <gasps> More dragoons? From whence did they come? Okay. All right. Uh, well, technically, there are buildings remaining for storage. You're right. Technically, mine has not won the game yet. However, I would dare to venture he's possibly. You know what we should use DeepMind AI? We should use DeepMind AI to I figure out. I wonder if DeepMind can figure out who's going to win this game. No, here's my thoughts. We use DeepMind AI to automatically end the game once it's a point where the player can no longer win. Yeah, or ever. I could just go over there and unplug Stork's computer. GG, Stork taps out, and Mind is the eventual winner of the set that would never end. A 3-2 victory over Stork to advance on to the final match in this group, which will Living be played in a couple weeks. Another day rapid. That's right, he survives. Mind is a survivor. He, uh... Not going to give up. Not going to give uh, up. It's 940 that. for us. And that wow. Was a really long series. How long have we been casting for? Is this I six? mean, we got back from halfway, I thought, at like 7. Oh, my God. Well, <laughs> uh, well, the games go on, but Stork will not. He is the first, first player eliminated from the KSL Season 4. And it's sad to see him go after he had such a good performance last season with the KSL, but... Yeah. I think mine deserves to get out of this group, though. I, th I think I would have felt robbed, or at least not out of this group, but out of this match. Right. I, I like the way those games were playing out. He was getting robbed. Well, the uh, the true people who deserve to get out of this match are the fans, uh, because coming yeah. up next we have our winners' match. It's Kakulza, also known as Modesty, taking on Mini. So don't go anywhere. We've got that game and a whole lot more when we return with more KSL.